Hello. I am sorry. I realized I made a fatal mistake. <laughs> I thought I set the stream for 8 o'clock. Apparently, I set the stream for 7.45. Oops. Hence why I'm actually 15 minutes late plus 5 when I thought I was only going to be 5 minutes late because I messed up the stream. I apologize. I've been... Uh, <laughs> I had meetings today that I didn't expect, so I pushed it to... I, I thought I said it at 8 o'clock instead of 7.45, which is when I normally start now. And uh, I messed up. My bad. I even said to Green Virus in, in DMs, oh, I'll, I'll be five minutes late. Not realizing I set the wrong time. Whoops. How are we all doing, guys? How are we all doing... Did you pull over the weekend? Did you get any new champions? I pulled for Kaima. I pulled for the Summon Rush event and I got diddly squat. Got absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. Got nothing. It was, uh, yes. It's a bad, bad experience. I always schedule it though. Um, you know? So yeah, I'm never gonna have Kaima. You pull for Kaima, but I'm getting a Ragash. Well, that's not too bad, I guess. Ragash is quite good. Got Supreme Garlic. Got a big one. See you. Got a second panda. Oh, that's rubbish. Finally got a seer. That's huge. Congratulations, Toaster. That is awesome. You might pull some ancients for Trunda. Well, you know, there's a video coming out this week. Um, There's a video coming out this week. I've joined the dark side. You know, queue up your uh, Ewan McGregor memes, you know. You were the chosen one. You're meant to have balance to the force. Well, apparently, I'm, I've not brought balance to the force. Um, but yeah, I, th th this is uh, it's coming out this week. You got Harima? Nice. What's my grand oak build for Hydra? I'll show you my grand oak build right now. That's my Grand Oak build at the moment. We might actually look at him today. We might we might mess around with him today. Um, dear old Grand Oak. We'll have a look at him. So. I know. I know. I know, Carrie. But, do you know what? It's been months. And they're never going to change her, are they? So. I just felt like. As the leader of the clan, I had to take responsibility. I, I pulled a Shuzhen. I can build it. So therefore, I need to take responsibility and help lead the clan. You know, if I have to take one for the team and join the dark side so that everyone else in my clan can actually get some of these rewards, then that is a price I'll pay. Okay? I will sacrifice my own moral scruples if it benefits other people. I won't do it if it benefits me, but if it benefits other people, then I'll do it. What? Uh, the website's not yet updated on the Titan events uh, for next week, is it? Uh, let me check what uh, what Never's got to here. Let me see what he's got going on. I know he, uh, I've sent him the information to do, so. I'm not building Ultimate Death Knight. That's to no one's benefit. Building an Ultimate Death Knight is like nobody wins. The enemy that faces me doesn't win. I don't win because now I have to watch and wait for it. It's just, no, nobody wins that. Exactly, Dan DeBay. Just, it's just, unfortunately, if you've got it, you just got to build it because otherwise you'll never win. They've they've just made it, so... They've made it like that. Uh, I beat Amius on normal. Didn't take long. 
That's taken down. So, uh... We're waiting for the re-gearing event. I tried to get some information for everyone. I tried to get an answer from Playroom today about when the free re-gearing re event was. Could they confirm that it was coming Friday? Um, I got told... You'll know when it's live. So in short, I couldn't get an answer. They just told us, you'll know when it's live. <laughs> so, hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, if it's, if you think Friday is four weeks exact since the previous free regearing event, so it probably makes sense that it'll be Thursday or Friday. It wouldn't shock me if it's the day after CVC. You know, but yeah, they basically said, um, quote, you'll know when it's in the event or basically, like, essentially we, you'll know when it's live, you know, as in we, we're not going to confirm or deny when it's going to happen. You'll find out when it takes, when you get told in the, in, in the thing. So it is what it is, I guess. Shall we do some uh, live arena then? <sighs> I'm closing in on goal two, bit by bit, step by step. We're getting there. When's the next fusion? Probably around the fourth of April, when the Titan event ends. Will be the four. Will be the next fusion. All right. So he's going to Mans. So I can go tank. So we'll pick Narsus and Cora. Yeah, I've done Amy as hard. Basically the same team. Um. Uh, by the way, I was looking at the increase accuracy list of champions on the website, and there's a champion in the section that should be under self-owning. Okay, Jordan, thanks. Uh, I will do a review after stream. Uh, Saf, you think deck effects could be done exclusively with champion training? I don't really know. I can't recall the last time they ever did a deck of fates for champion training. Wow, he's going full on, full on speed team here. Uh, that's fine. We've got a we've got an ace of our sleeves in Tormin. So we can pick a, a revive here. We would have to pick a DPS here, which is probably going to be Rodas. This is where Stoltus would be really handy, by the way. If I had Stoltus built, because he's great into Armands because he can't, he'll weak hit a lot. I've noticed that Armands does struggle a little bit into Harima because of affinity. So. But yeah, I don't think they've ever done a champion training deck of fates. To my knowledge, I could be wrong. It is confirmed, yeah. It is confirmed. It's in the player and play thing. Oh, man. If I don't ban our mans, I'm never taking a turn. But likewise, I could just get one shot by Jorgid. Should we try it? This is disaster. This is a failure, by the way. This is rule number one. <laughs> rule number one of Live Arena. Always ban our mans. Wow, he didn't ban... Okay. All right. That was the deck. Oh, was it the deck of fate with gearing? Was it? Oh, that might that might mean we get another gearing one then. That's a good point. I was pretty critical of that one because I didn't think it was worth it. So, um, I don't have Hegemon, no. I know I was speaking to Panda about Hegemon. Panda is using Hegemon a lot against um, our mans. Do we get a turn? Slowly. Slowly. Oh, okay. Why would you not? Is he... I mean, I can't really do anything right now because of the Hefrak will just one-shot me. But I can try and break the Hefrak stone skin, nearly. Oh, he got frozen. The problem is he can't A3. The moment he A3s, he's probably... Like, I would have A3'd by now. Purely because I can just, like, land some provokes. Now, the Hefrak will probably one-shot my Narsus, but he won't one-shot my Rotus. So I can revive now, drop turn meter. Now, theoretically, I should be able to interject here. Because if he tries to turn meter boost, I should be able to freeze the, uh, the champs. So he can't really... Well, he went for it and he got lucky, but it's fine. Should have banned the Tormen. Oh, look at all that lovely life harvest. 
Although, the only problem is, I don't really have... I would love to know why my 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 torment. Oh, he did freeze. Thank God. I was gonna say I'd love to know why my torment never freezes. Now I could still lose this because our mans can absolutely still beat this because of this problem. I haven't won yet. The only difference is I'm a bit faster. He can't break my my resistance check, so I haven't I haven't won, but I haven't lost. It depends if the Kaiman's gonna sleep me. Okay, so, take out the Reviver. Oh, that was a mistake. It's fine. And then kill the Armands. And then kill them all. There we go. My Tormin's not booked. Tormin is a terrible build. We don't even look at Tormin. Hey, Viper. Hey, Sab. Is the HH CVC calculator, it says that you get points when you awaken champions. Is that true? Yes. Uh, awaken champion. It should be when you get souls. I'm pretty sure it's when you get souls, not when you awaken. Do you know what I haven't seen Dune again? I was meant to take my mum. I'm going to have to check what's going on with her. Um, yeah, it's awakening champion basically getting the soul. It's not actually awakening them. So you can't use something from the forge, for example. You actually, actually have to, like, awaken them. Uh, sorry, you, you have to summon the soul, not awaken them. Let me get that right. You have to summon the soul from the portal. That's how you get them. So it's not awaken the champion, it's using the stones. I need to change probably that to be summoning souls. Oh, look at that. It's a great start, isn't it? You saw Dune today for the first time. It is amazing. Didn't I say the temple scene was amazing? No spoilers. No spoilers allowed. Uh, buying souls. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can acquire... Yeah, that's, sorry, you can acquire perfect souls. No, 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 it doesn't, Curry. It doesn't, because they're split souls. Maybe one star, but the others are split souls. Well, we know what this is going to be. This is going to be a loss. Straight out, this is going to be a loss. Oh, well, the only hope we've got is if we can armands it. So... Yeah, I think I'm going to have to take Rotus Criminals. I don't think it does because they have to be perfect souls. And if you buy anything from the market, they're always a split soul. It may be one star, but I'm pretty sure the rest don't. Oh, man, this is just... I stand no chance here. This is going to be a loss straight out the bat. I'll check after this now. I'll have a look in the read. Alright, he's taking our mans. I have no chance. This is going to be a straight loss. Why not? Because what you can essentially do, Das, is save up a bunch of them and then burst it out that way. They want you to summon resources as part of the event. Well, rule number one. If you know you're bringing Bolster, always ban the Narsus. That's like rule number one. Only problem is now, I can't really do anything because of this damn Duchess stone skin. Can I get rid of some of those? No. We are probably going to lose because of Duchess stone skin, but hey. There's hope. Maybe we can get a double kill here. Okay, have we got A2? Yeah, good. Lovely. If you have shield, always ban Narsus. This is it's almost as important as going, if there's an Armands, you ban the Armands, right? Mind you, I suppose he banned the Armands, so I can't be too critical, actually, of this guy, because what is he going to ban? The difference is he probably should have got away with... He probably should have banned the Narsus, not the Armands, because he's just not going to win this now. So I suppose I'm being critical of him. He probably was stuck in a bit of a... He was probably stuck, you know. It's probably nothing he could really do. Um. Could he have played it any better? 
I mean, because I picked Arbiter on Mans, he was almost guaranteed not to take a turn. The thing is, though, he's got six star Polymorph, so there's a very strong possibility he would Polymorph my Armands. So I would have run the risk of it. What I would have done is I would have put Necra as my leader and just, or try to resist it out. And just try it, because I think, if you know you're going in there with Bolster, Narcissus is just too powerful. He's going to one-shot you. And I think that's the difference. It, it is a bit there, yeah. I can't be too critical, actually, in, in hindsight. Uh, Saf, did you get the reward for all... Yes, Spartan. I got it like two days after... Like I think I got it like March the 6th or March the 7th. Uh, why is there sometimes the shield coming back when you take a hit? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean, Patrick. I really need to tag our mans. I keep forgetting to do it. Any update on the Cronin video? <laughs> Where am I at with books right now? Well, now that I've got a Trunder team, um, do you know what? I'm going to try and get it done in the next week, Reaper. I've got a lot of books, so maybe I can get somewhere with it. That's, but that's what's been holding me back, is booking. I haven't been able to book him yet, and that's been a bit of an issue. Uh, this is a very, very, very strong team that I'm going to have to try and counter. Now, technically, if I do that, I'll be fine. Uh, do we know how many tones are available in total? Yeah, what uh, Taiku said. 17.50 in total. Currently, there was 10,050 available. So that is the current max because I've done everything. Uh, do you have a strategy? What type of champs do you do? Yes, I do. I'm biased. Um, I'm going to... That's ruined me. I've lost this one, by the way. Uh, if I don't ban the, tr the Torment, like, he knows I have to ban the Torment. I'm not going to win the speed race. Oh, we didn't ban the Armands, though. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I'll go through my, my pick priority. Are oh, you bedridden after your surgery? Sorry to hear that, Reapers. Uh, Reapers. Hope everything is okay. Uh, boom. Okay, so we've got to be careful. I don't think I can polymorph that. Do I just hold polymorph? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to hold Polymorph until I need it. Interesting decision. I kind of just want to not... I, I don't want to kill them right now. I don't mind if I get locked out. This team is okay for, for lockout. I can work around that. I just need to kill this uh, Siffy really quickly. Because the moment Siffy gets a turn like now, now I'm in a bit of spot of bother. Because I need to kill this Siffy like yesterday because of this. Now I guess I'm going to get one shot because he's going to kill my blad and then it's over. I mean, technically you should go for Ancora. Why are you going for our mans? Well, I suppose that, well, I suppose it works, but I've got to revive. Now it's whether or not I can actually get a turn before Wukong, which I don't think I can. He's going to sleep probably our mans. And I'm dead. Why didn't you attack? You could have just killed my Vlad. Why didn't you just kill my Vlad? You would have one shot. I'm questioning this person's decision making. I mean, I'm still going to lose because he's got powerful champs in me. But I'm, I'm still like... Oh, 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 you got polymorphed. Again, my only goal is to kill this damn Siffy. I have to kill the Siffy. I have no chance if I can't kill the Siffy. Oh, come on, let me have a turn. Uh-oh. All right, now we did. Kill the Siffy. Right, now we got a chance. Very slim chance, but we have a chance. If he A3s into my double revive, I got no chance. If he A2s my, my Ancora and I die. That was close. I could lose her though. Oh, she's alive by this. Don't don't head better to No! Alright, well. It's over. 
Oh well, it was a good run. I knew I'd lose that the moment the draft was up because they have powerful champions. He actually like totally misplayed that. I don't know why he didn't just Sun Wukong kill my Amans and killed everyone. And he just got reaped by a sheep. Um. Yeah, so points. Get perfect souls. So when you go into the soul forge, you're not buying perfect souls unless they're one star. So if you get a one star from the merchant, the merchant will count. But the split souls will not count. So if I get a Ignatius one star, that will count. If I get this, that will count. These split souls will not count for the CBC. Yeah, it's the perfect soul wording. But they're very clever about it. Yeah, I need to... Uh, I'll, I'll adjust the language of that, Das. It's a bit misleading, yeah. Is it true that application of souls give you points? No. You have to... It's, it's acquisition of the soul, not application of the soul. You have to acquire it. Just like summoning champions, right? You need to summon the champion to your to your account. Can't believe you got sheep reaped. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh... Well, he's allowed me to have the setup. Rorik's quite good. Like if you have the thing is crazy thunder, if you have a plus four Rorik and you get some ignore defense on him, you can do true damage on his counterattacks. So if you put a counterattack set on him, you permanently true damage. It's pretty good. Perfect. Because I haven't done masteries on him yet. I'm still doing the masteries on him. If you see the level of my heroes are not level 60s, because they still haven't got masteries. Complete. Um, do you think they're throwing so many summon events at this because the next fusion is soon? They're not really throwing more than what they normally do. They just, they put an extra heroes path in, but otherwise it's been one a week. And they always do a clan versus clan summoning event. That's always been the case. Probably won't take them a rich girl. That's fine. But what I can do is get rid of all those buffs. Now you take out that. Thank you. And then you start healing. Uh, can you show me that they don't give points for area bonuses? I don't really know why they didn't do that. Uh, good afternoon. I hope you're having a good time. What blessing would you recommend for Geomancer? Planning to use him in Hydra, Twins, and Clan, uh, uh, clan Boss. Probably Cruelty, Alex. Cruelty is what I would say. Because every time you attack, you'll stack up the Cruelty. It's very, very quick to stack up Cruelty. And Cruelty will give you the most benefit right now in the game. So I would go Cruelty for Geomancer. Yeah, pretty much Crouching. All right. Rule number one of Live Arena. Don't ban... Uh, always ban Armands. Because, you know. I need to be careful, though. Like, I've got to be careful about the Harima. Uh, about the... Uh, the Marichka. Ideally, I want to get rid of Nekrat. Because of this. This is what I'm worried about. He can still win because the monkey is so strong. And i got to try and breach this properly. So I can steal Tommy again. Now is when I want to kill her. But it's going to be difficult through all these buffs. Especially if I ever cleanse from Ancora, I'm going to use that. Like she can't really do anything because everyone's stunned. Unless she's got a cleanse. Hopefully she hasn't got a cleanse. Good. Okay, I don't have this. I can try and breach this. I 
kind of don't want to kill them, basically. Because if I kill the monkey, he just keeps reviving. Right, good. That's what I wanted. So that revived. Now I can start... Uh, doing some work, hopefully. Our man's has got his turn. And we can just polymorph him. That should then... Hopefully I won't get one shot by Wukong. That's what I'm worried about right now, is getting one shot by Wukong. Loads of turn meter. Because we put his ability on cooldown. That's what I was worried about. It's fine, we survived it though. Who's he going to protect? Can he even protect anyone? Okay. So we take him out. I don't think his passive's there. Good. Turn. Boom. Done. Whew. Yeah, but he can... He can A2, like, um... Arbiter, right? Uh, so he can still do loads of damage. I actually don't have half as much problem with Marichka as people think. Like, a lot of people say Marichka is a real problem. I don't have a half as much problem with Marichka as I do something like Taras. I can counter Marichka quite comfortably. It's just about controlling when you let her revive. To be fair, that person made a fatal mistake of allowing Marichka to be paired without any uh, secondary reviver. Right, you always want to revive her with Marichka so that you can re-revive the Marichka. That's the whole point. Yeah, Taras is scarier. He did some calculations of Hydro Damage Dealers, especially looking at the conditional extra hits. I was wondering if Galkut, Yannicka, Skullcrown, and Inchinacia work the same as Magnar and Martial Ed. Uh, in terms of conditional single hits, um, Martial Ed will work like Skullcrown, so the secondary hit is single target. Yannicka will work like Magnar, where both hits are AoE. And I don't know what Galkut does, it does something very weird. Uh, if there are two ultimate death knights on a team, which one soaks the damage? <laughs> that sounds a bit like when it, a bit like a joke where it's like two Irishmen walk into a bar, what happens kind of thing. I've still not pulled Gwendolyn, no. She's on my, I, I'll get her eventually. I just haven't decided when. I am going to lose this fight so bad, it is unbelievable. But we're going to use our trump card and we're going to pull that. Uh... I don't know. Yeah, I was afraid that was going to happen. I'm just going to get one shot, probably. We'll see. It depends if his jaw gate goes crazy. I'd probably get one shot here. Uh, when you play Astroth and Diva Spreader, you have to target one of the ultimate deaths on both of the ones that use as passive. Okay. I have no idea how that team works. The two-body problem. <laughs> uh, I haven't used my Ronda yet, no. Um, she's... I Basically, I'm, I'm waiting for the free regaming event. That's why I tried to get some information about when it's happening, because my account is, like, on a hold until the free regaming event. What I probably will be doing is, when the free regaming event happens, I will likely be doing a pretty mega stream. We're probably going to be talking 12 hours. And I'm going to be basically on stream rebuilding my entire account from the ground up. We're going to be doing clan boss rebuild, hydra rebuild, arena rebuild, you name it. We're going to do the whole lot. I'm going to lose this. I knew it at the moment I saw it because he's going to kill the Ancora. Yep. GG. I knew this was going to happen the moment they drafted. So, sometimes you're just going to lose the fight. Like, I know the jaw kids are going to one-shot me. There's nothing I can do to stop that. So, unfortunately, sometimes, sometimes you just lose them. It's fine. When is that? Well, I don't really know because I don't know when the free regaming event is. But if it's on the weekend, it will be like the Saturday or the Sunday. We'll see. Once I know, I'll schedule it. But yeah. That's the problem. I was trying to know so I could plan ahead. But, I, you know, they don't tell us anything, do they? 
to in stage one of Centranos. Don't get me don't don't even get me started on that one. Uh, I'll give you a missions update now. Actually, I actually have a video going out tomorrow on on Marius missions. I actually I was going to do it today, but then I decided to do the video that I, I did today instead. Um, because of the the free gift thing. Um, they're going to go fast. Okay, so we're going to have to go slow, and then pick Rodus. Uh, he was really scared to go into Live Arena, but man, am I really enjoying it. Yeah, there's, there is levels of strategy with Live Arena. Like, you can do some counter picks and stuff. You do generally run the same team because you just don't have the gear to spread across, like, seven or eight different champions. Like, I can probably do that, but most people can't commit that much resources to, like, eight different nukers or seven different nukers. So you will kind of pick the same structure, but you can see that sometimes I'll bring the Tormin in, sometimes I'll bring the Armands in. Like, I won't bring, bring the Armands because I know I can't go first. So if I can't go first, our man's value drops significantly. I can use him to force a ban if I want. If I want to force the ban, I could possibly use our man's to scare them. Uh, what do I think about Padraig? I'm wondering about using Padraig in my Brutal team. We need to look at Brutal Hydra after this, and I'm wondering about using him in my Brutal team. Okay. That's why I held this pick last. I knew they were going to be picking some sort of bomb thing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get rid of this. I actually don't mind that he's got a bomber now. He'll probably ban my Mithrala, but I've got Ancor and High Resistance, so I've got Double Cleanse. I knew that that was going to happen, which is why I held that support role to last. Oh, he didn't ban. Okay. Mistakes were made by him. Is he as good as Lady Makage Elixium? The... Does he cleanse, though? Does he get rid of the fear? Because that's one of the biggest things about Mikage. She can get rid of the fear off your team. So she becomes like a pseudo-torment solution. He cleanses, does he? I can't remember his kit off the top of my head. Um, I don't think 8-piece is necessarily worth it unless you plan on eventually building them into nine piece pots protection is one of those things that if you can't hit the max then is it is, is it that good i don't know i hate the fact he stole my protection and then he stuck i had stone skin on that duchess he got rid of the stone skin slept it and then i got stunned really appreciate that why is he going before my team He's not faster than my Ancora. Honestly, sometimes. He's not faster than my Ancora, so I don't understand how he he got a turn before them. Unless they were slept and rewoke up, maybe, and maybe I missed it. Doesn't really matter. I've, I've probably won now. Oh, his passive trigger did it. Do I get a turn at all? I've still got one more cleanse, haven't I? Am I allowed to turn? Thank you. Uh, right, so I need to get rid of this. And then I need to get rid of him. All right, there goes the revives. Now I just have to survive. Yeah, there we go. Oh, we're about to win another chest. Ah, oh, I'm almost at my primal quartz limit. That's a bit rubbish. Uh, I think Ancora is like 850 at this point. Yeah, Harima's going to out-damage Whisper purely because of her scaling capability. Hey. What? What? What are you doing? Having conversations with a certain feline. Okay, so he's going speed team. So, someone asked me earlier, how do I pick priorities, okay? I'm always picking Narsus and Ancora first because they're just my best built team, my strongest built team, and generally, like, the safest build. 
they, they can go up against pretty much any opponent that they face. They're tanky, they've got high resist, I've got a revive, and it's pretty pretty safe as a first two picks. I'm not showing my hand. I never pick in Rotus or Necret first because I show my hand too early. I don't want them to know that they can just pick Ultimate Death Knight. Now in this situation, because they've picked three fast champions, right, three speed auras, everything, I know they want to go first. So I, I basically go towards a more tank lineup and I will pick Rotus in this situation. Why? Because now they can't one-shot me unless they hit a double hit. And also now I've got Duchess. So I go, I can't go first because I can't probably ban out all of their speed auras. So I'm going to go for a secondary role where I can kind of tank it and go second. Whereas if they don't pick like Armands and Arbiter, I will go Armands and Arbiter and try and win the speed race myself. So he's going bombs. So again, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. He will pro The only thing is I will have to ban his ultimate death knight if I do this. But it's fine because he probably doesn't have the ability to take anything off my uh, Mithrala. Why didn't he? Yeah, because he was like, I had to take the ultimate death knight because he was going to ban my Narcissus. So there was no way I was going to win that fight because it would have taken me too long to get through the ultimate death knight. Whereas now all I have to do is make sure that he can't land bombs on my Mithrala, which he hasn't got increased accuracy. So he's probably not going to be able to. And Armand's is probably not going to be able to touch my Mithrala. I know I'm pretty confident of that because it's like a thousand resistance. See? He can't even take any turn meter off my three supports. So the bombs here aren't a problem. And he's he's lost this one now. So this is when I this is when I pivot to a, a more defensive go second strategy. When this situation is gonna happen here. It might take me a few rounds to basically get control, but eventually they will fall to my team, right? I gotta wait for Rotus to come out because I got sheeped. He'll lose a bit of turn meter, probably it's fine. He's got low cooldowns anyway. He can't one shot me because I'm strong affinity. He will kill me, but it's fine. I'll revive it with Ancora. Remember, Ancora's revive is like 75% turn meter. It's much stronger. So I'll revive it here. And now the big thing we're going to have is the petrification passive from Mithral is going to cut in. Now I have control. He can't win this. I shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. I shouldn't attack a petrified target. That was a mistake. Because she's taking 65% less damage. But obviously I want to get rid of the reviver as quickly as possible. So as much as it was a mistake, it won't matter with the outcome here because his reviver's down and at this point now it's how quickly can I just kill his two supports and then kill Wukong because Wukong's not gonna be able to do enough damage here Wukong's very Rotus is quite good into Wukong because he's strong affinity and generally like he'll probably strip my turn meter away from Rotus here but like he can't actually punch through the my supports so we're just playing a waiting game You can, you can't, so you can remove Veil, but you can't steal Veil, Jano. It's a, it's an intricacy with the, the mechanic. So, like, Wukong can't take the Veil because he steals buffs. He needs to physically remove the buff in order for him to, um, to do it. That is why you're finding that he never steals the buff away from her. There we go. I don't know why he went all the way to the end, you know? Yeah, so it's something that like it happens with um the uh, with Dark Fay. You can't steal Dark Fay's veil buff, but you can remove it. Which is kind of important because it does reduce damage you take by 15%, so it's a factor. Uh, Yumiko with Karato can steal it. Okay, they may be in very specific situations. Um, that that might happen in some like skill matchups, like skill set comparisons. You may be able to, but the rule of thumb is with Veil, it can't be stolen. Uh, is Quintus good? Ironically, Quintus is better for PVE content than he is for PVP. He's very good in Hydra. 
Very good in places like Clan Boss. Very good for killing things rapidly. But he doesn't quite have the power that I understand. I, I mean, I know Biohack, for example, really likes him in Live Arena as well. Um, now, Harim is a bit of a problem here. I probably should do this. What do I play when the enemy kicks... Pick, uh, when they pick the king? At the moment, it's Vlad Rodas. But eventually, I'll have... Um, I'll have uh, Ronda, Harima, uh, not Ronda, not Harima, Ronda, Xena, and Stoltus as backup options when I have them built. Uh, okay, this is a good decision, so I can do that, and I can do uh, that. I'm probably going to ban the Harima here. Uh, she's not booked. That's why uh, she's not built. That's why I'm not using Ronda. Yeah, I saw that was going to happen, but I'm, I'm just going to do this. You are not helping today. Go on. Go, 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 go. go. go on. So a lot of my teams are not built. A lot of my champions aren't built. So uh, how would your uh, pick approach change if you had Yumiko Warlord? Um... How would it change by Yumiko Warlord? It would probably have to take Armand's spot. The issue with Armand's is the spot that he takes is a spot that normally is dedicated to a second reviver or a utility. So that's a bit of a problem, you know, uh, because it means you, you normally need to pick two revivers, two damage dealers, and then you have a fifth spot for support. Which is, you know, a bit of a problem that you, you just don't have here. So you have to make a decision. Are you going to go lockout or are you are going to go Armands? Now, I would say Armands is effectively a lockout with a bit more consistency. Because you get turn meter as much as the lockout. What you got to remember about lockout is lockout is becoming less powerful. Because of these champions like Padraig and Korra. Rotus having low cooldowns. Narsus having the ability to take extra turns, right? The, the lockout window is getting less and less. It's becoming a little bit... Yeah, mythicals. Cool. Very good point. You can't really lock people out as much anymore. So the value of Yumiko and Warlord is dropping in arena. Like I can pick Rotus, Ancora, Narsus, Necra. And that is a crazy team to build. Because every time you attack my protected... No, um, Necret champion, I reduce cooldowns. Ancora reduces cooldowns on the A1. Rotus has a two-turn cooldown into an extra turn. Narsus has an extra turn into a two, three-turn cooldown. It becomes a lot easier to manage that because they can't rotate quickly, especially Yumiko. Yumiko has got a five-turn cooldown. Warlord's a lot harder. Warlord is all, all about whether he gets his turn meter drop. If Warlord gets his turn meter drop, then it becomes a lot stronger. If he doesn't, then it becomes weaker. What do we got here? Cool. 45 quarts. I, I'm just keeping all these because I need them for missions. So. I just don't understand why the 2 meter drop is on and Korra's Revive gets resisted for me. It says uh, it can't be resisted and yet always says I, it can't be resisted if Narsus is on the team. If Narsus is on the team it can't be resisted. Otherwise it can. The value Crixia has is she can reset as well as lockout. That's the difference with Crixia. So she's kind of got that dual role where if something goes wrong, she can reset it. But also, if you want to lockout, you can. You've got the flexibility. That's the, that's the value of Mythicals and what they bring. You've got the flexibility in their team roles. Um, this is probably going to be a loss, but we'll see what happens. No, I'll show you where I'm at with Marius missions after we finish these last two fights. So... I know, right? Five star get rear. It's brilliant. I did get a pretty good chest last time though, Kirk, so I can't complain. Hey, I'm not going to complain though, J Jacob. It's, uh... It's free rewards for not much, you know? Uh, hey, Seth, I want to ask you if it's worth building Kaja and Timmit for a third tag team. They are very strong, Giannis. The only thing I don't like is Kaja is a bit weaker than Timmit. 
because Karja only does a one turn block debuffs, that's really a problem. Um, in, in a general sense, that's really a problem. So because of that, she loses a bit of value. Um, and also, outside of that cleanse and turn meter boost, she's just an A1. She doesn't do enough extra. I hate this setup. I really do. Okay, well, let's just get those turn meter controls. Let's try get rid of her. Nice. Uh, who do I kill? Okay. We've got to wait for the Pythian stone skin, and then we've got to play the quest of... Ah, oh, I forgot he's going to cleanse. That was a mistake. Can I put you on cooldown? Nice. That's going to be good. Hopefully he hasn't got A2. A3 is what I'd want him to do right now. Constant pressure. Come on. Which one did it put on cooldown? i put it on the A3. It's fine. We can revive, though. Let's start taking these out. Put some more cooldown. We're waiting for the Pythian, basically, because I can't touch the Pythian until I get rid of the stone skin. And now I hopefully won't die. Oh, you got stone skinned. Polymorph is on... Um, the Armands. That's why that was really strong. So now I gotta hope that I don't weak it. I weak it. Damn it. You go to sleep. <laughs> the sheep are everywhere. Okay, so now all I have to do is re-kill the Duchess. So I kill the Duchess. Then we gotta kill this. No. Nope. Gotta kill the Pythian now. Boost to get ahead of the curve. And we do our greatest hits again. Oh lord, it's just so disgusting, isn't it? Oh, we did stun me. It's kind of annoying. Oh, will this Pythian die? Uh, make sure. Hmm, I probably can just... Oh, I was hoping to kill him. That's annoying. I mean, he's probably got no damage. I don't even know if he's got any abilities. They're probably all on cooldown. Ah. Uh. Okay, so, can we kill him? Yes. Then you. Boost. I mean, I can't really die. He's no damage now. Oh, that, that, okay. Apparently, I can nearly die. Right, you go back to sleep. Heal up. No, don't come. <sighs> oh, come on. Okay, good. For my next greatest hits. It's, it's just... It is quite appalling trying to fight this on man's. I don't even think it's Taras got to do like much at all. I should I I should have lost that one, but he didn't ban the Armands. Rule number one of Life Arena. Always ban the Armands. Not bad that. We're on a good win rate tonight. Yeah, I'll show the build after this last fight, uh Lachax.
Uh, hey, Sap, how fast does a man need to be to be cut in? How fast does a man need to be cut in a 400 speed arbiter when he has four speed supersonic? Did uh, I'm pretty sure short on skills gave you an equation for that, didn't he? In um, in Discord, did you understand what he was saying, or do you need me to break it down for you? Yeah, so there's two number one rules. If you see an arm you ban it. And if you have bolster or strengthen, like a Mithrala, you absolutely have to ban the Narsus. Uh, this one is awkward because I can't pick Rhodus. This one's awkward because I can't pick Rotus. I'm going to pivot slightly. I think I've lost this one. Got in my head a little bit. Okay, I'll do the math for you in a moment, uh, Dutchie. Uh, I've lost this one. I've, I've lost this one, just straight out. I know I have. I've got in my head a bit. Did you? What was their name, Crouchin? Wow, they let me have Narsus? That's a shock. Why did they do that? Why did you let me have Narsus? Does he not realize that Baron would have been better? Because the Baron can't... I can't kill anyone with Baron. Does he not realize that? Like, he can tank my A3. I can't one-shot his Rotus. I, I don't understand why he... Didn't... I mean, I, he's going to win anyway, but... Because this. Like, he's going to win anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Because, unfortunately, unlike Taras, when I lose my max HP, I lose damage. So I can't do anything. Look, can't do anything. And he's just going to keep draining my health away. Until I can't. And this is where something like Padraig is very good. Because he would max cleanse. Marichka very good. Oh, we didn't hit Helm Smash at that time. My only hope is try... I should have A1 there, not A2'd. But my only hope is being able to counterattack, kill this Rodas. It's, it's the only chance I've got. But it's a six-star ward of the Fallen Rotus. It's going to be really hard to kill him. Probably should have saved that until the next turn. A3, here it comes again. Okay, well, put that on cooldown at least. <sighs> He's going to lock me out. He's going to lock me out. Just as I was about to A2, he's going to lock me out. Well, we can start punching some damage here. Problem is, I'm never going to get a revive now for the Necra, uh, for the um, the Ancora, which is what I need to reset the cooldowns of. I don't want to quit because there is a chance I can win if I get if I get a bit lucky. If if I can somehow cycle back around properly, there's a chance I can still win. No, no, it's not, it's not now. Pretty sure it's over now. The only chance was there not losing my um my champion, but it's pretty much done for. Yeah. I knew I'd lost that the moment I went into the fight though, so it's fine. Seven three is not bad. Like, I, I just cannot beat that team 
if I don't get um right. I just missed I, I got in my brain the bit I was thinking about picking the neck rep, but I needed more agency. But Yeah. That's what I mean about Warlord Lockout. If he gets the Termeter drop, it's very strong. But otherwise... But, you know, pretty good wins. We're climbing. We need to get gold, too. Nearly at gold, too. Cool. Era bonus says, I don't think I can upgrade any more right now. So I'm going to have to keep waiting. Uh, yeah, Rhonda probably would have if she was built. If she was built. Uh, so, Marius missions. I'm at this point. This is how far I've got. The next one that is coming up is the boots one. It cost me so much energy. I have a video coming out basically detailing the progress that I did on Sunday night. It cost me so much energy that I just... I probably did it wrong. If I'm being honest, I probably should have waited till tomorrow when the finite was on so i could basically do it do it all against finite i was doing it in dragon because it was quick um in hindsight i should have waited but i still need to do the dungeon divers i just did too much dungeon divers no i'm still gonna do it so the reason why i stopped here was because um there is a finite turn attack tomorrow with times three savage i think or times two savage so I figured there's no point me rushing to do this. I might as well do this tomorrow because the first block of part two is Force Iron Twins. So I had I had today free. I could do whatever I want today. Wasn't really a problem, right? Because it's it's currently um, Spirit. So there was no reason for me to go and rush to do it. So tomorrow I will do all of this plus this. I'll buy two souls from the merchant. Now the tip you can do here is just basically buy like two star. Save yourself some essence. Just buy two star essence. So I'll buy the two souls there. Then I'm this. Then I'll farm Fire Knight for gear, and hopefully I'll get Mythical Boots. It'll be interesting to see how much energy this costs me. And then I'm home free. I can awaken a champion. I've got Hydra that I can do tomorrow. So I'm going to save one key. I'm going to do one key of Hydra tomorrow, and then I can do the next chain. But I know that one of them is Clan Quest as well, so I'll be careful about the qua the, the Clan Quests. So. Mhm. Mm Exactly. Uh, now, Lacaz was asking me about my um, Armands. So, in an ideal world, the best build for Armands is four pieces of stone skin and at least four pieces of, uh, uh, like, four, probably five pieces of supersonic. Maybe four with a 12% speed set. That's the best build because you make sure that you always get a turn, you can go second. But what Supersonic does is allow you to gain speed. This is effectively 24% turn meter fill against a Duchess or a Siffy. This set bonus here. I gain 24% turn meter whenever they use their A2 ability. So I don't actually have stone skin accessories to make this work. So I can't do it. But that would be the best build. Four pieces of stone skin. Five pieces of Supersonic or four pieces of Supersonic with a particular set. Like you can see I'm working on the masteries bit by bit. Uh, I just haven't really thought about what masteries I want right now. Um, but I can probably get down to here in a little bit. Not quite yet. I need another, like, a bit more. So in between, I was doing a bit of masteries. Um, but obviously, I'm, I put that on hold. He's still not booked. And Cora's passive is still not booked. These are the things that are going to get booked tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're waiting on booking these. So he's been doing all those live arenas without books. That just, just kind of shows you how nuts he is. He, he did all those fights... And he's not even booked. So he could get an entire cooldown on this. Not even booked. It's bonkers, right? Absolute bonkers. So, I mean, not just that. As I said at the start of the... The, the top of the hour, as I said. Um, I did it because the clan needed someone to do it. And I could do it. So I, I took one for the team, basically. Because the clan was losing motivation. I could see it. And I wanted the clan to succeed. So, uh, My Viking Narsus. Full damage. Lethal. He's currently at 121,000 HP. 254% crit damage. A lot of this is non-optimized. Crit rate instead of crit damage. 
Uh, he's missing. He, we're basically waiting for a. Um, his original build, I think, had a cruel set of gloves. I think it was like uh, crit damage. Which one was it? Who was wearing it? Someone was wearing it. It could have been these. So right now he's overcapped on crit rate. I think it was this one with crit rate. I could be wrong. One of them is the one that it was recommending. I'm pretty sure it was the gloves that Ordinator is wearing. Uh, because it gives me the crit rate that I need, but I needed this ascended to crit rate. So it would actually... Maybe it wasn't. I'm trying to think now who... Which set of gloves it was. It was a set of gloves that I need to ascend to get crit rate on. That's all I remember. I don't think it was these ones. Well, it could have been those ones, actually. That required crit rate on it. See, it, it needed the temp set. It could have been the, this one here. So he's kind of in a weird build at the moment. I might have to rebuild him during the free regearing event. But again, like... Poor... Poor. You know, really, this is this is where this dust is coming into it. 64 dust, I've been saving it all up. Defense is terrible. Really, it needs to be something like speed or HP percent. We'll take that. That's that's probably kept. I'll probably keep it like that. That's actually really good. So now he's got 126,000. We'll take that. That's that's as good as we're ever gonna get. Um, but I do need to find a cruel piece to go in this. Which is difficult. So, um, yeah, so one of these pieces, probably in the top row, needs to be cruel. To basically get what we want. Ideally, cruel HP percent. But as you can see, very difficult to make it work. I could take something like that, but we lose a lot of speed. I don't really want to lose too much speed. That loses me crit rate. That's pretty good. That's a candidate for six darwin, actually. It's kind of low rolled, but... Okay, so, interesting. Keep in mind, my head's in the way, isn't it? Okay, let me do this, move out of the way. This is interesting. It's got a better HP roll, I lose a bit of speed. But I gain HP percent. Theoretically, it should be better. Like, what is 7% uh, health for him? 23, 9, 5, 5, 10, 0.07. Yeah, so if I glyph that, that's better. Keep in mind that's losing speed without a glyph, right? So if, obviously if I... Uh... Of course, there's a plus 2. I'll send it. Hopefully it's HP. Okay, it was attack. It's a bit annoying. That's a bit better of a comparison. So I lose five speed, which would put me a bit slower than I'd like. Obviously, I can still glyph the difference, but essentially it's a it's a it's a five speed roll at the moment. I would lose 191 HP, but I would gain five percent of no defense. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
the thing is, I can't afford to lose a single bit of crit rate. Because even these gloves are in crit rate, right? So I can't afford to lose a single bit of crit rate. Otherwise, um, I don't have enough crit rate. So that's why that's important. That's as close as I can as a straight swap. You know, that is as close as a straight swap as I can get. You know, obviously I can glyph more speed if I wanted to. And the top row needs to be awakened better. Like, that needs to be HP. This needs to be HP. That's, this is perfect at HP. Fine on HP. It's not the end of the world. Crit rate's fine. Like, his amulet is pretty okay. Do I have a better one? Crazy to me that that's less and it's a triple roll. Really crazy. Yeah, see, none of these are very good at all. His ring needs a bit of work as well. I think his ban is pretty good, though. Oh, no, his ban is pretty bad as well. HP, speed, HP percentage. It's the only one I got is speed and HP percentage, that's why. Uh, do I have any Slayer accessories? Or possibly. They're probably not very good, though. Like, he's wearing a pretty good one. I probably kept it because it's reaction. Um, if I do, they're up here somewhere. In my armada of things, I need to... Uh... I'm not going to trade it in for a five-star. That's not worth it. In my large collection of things, I still need to gear cleanse because, you know, accessory gear cleanse is the most expensive thing to do in the game. I don't think we do. There are many things I have in my account, but that is not one of them. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's in a bit of a weird build because of that. I, I feel like the weapon is a good swap. But at the moment, I would lose a lot of speed. Which is equally as important, you know. We'll do it, though. We'll do it. If the game wants to. Apparently the game doesn't want to. Equip. Okay, let's restart the game then. Let's try that. One never knows these things. Okay, let's go back to Narsus. Cruel. That's the weapon. Okay. Mm, so rolled. Oh, sorry. Um, yes. I always forget to do that. Okay. So it's a bit slow. But, you know, you can see right now the glyphing that I've got on this is terrible. Like, I could glyph this. That would help, you know? I always get nervous about glyphing too many things. Like, glyph up here as well. Because of that. Ugh. Ugh, it feels bad. It feels really bad. But otherwise, he is fully maxed to the to the limit that I can get him. Uh, obviously, this needs to be dusted, but um, crit damage. 
It just comes a point in time where you throw in away dust. Like, this is meant to be the easiest one. Normally, I mean, it only takes me two or three attempts to do this. Brutal. Brutal. Uh, Rodus at the moment needs a hell of a lot of dusting. Dust. 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 Oh, that, that just needs upgrading, actually. Uh, that needs dust. Uh, that's fine. So, I just need to dust a lot of things. But I've been trying to hold on to things for a... Uh, I've been trying to hold on for the regearing event. I didn't want to over overwhelm. Like, that 60-odd dust that I'll have is just going to go out the window in seconds. Um, do you prefer work on in Savage Lethal or High Accuracy? Well, before I got Shujen and Narsus and Anamans, I did prefer prefer him in speed but now i think he's better in hybrid i don't think you need to if you have those options if you have some solution to get rid of ultimate death knight you go damage basically if you have those options you go damage so i think it's friday i think it's going to be coming friday so my amans at the moment is 484 accuracy 327 speed but he's missing the four star and five star awakening, which is going to give him a thousand more health and 75 accuracy. He's also missing the mastery capstone. That's another 50 accuracy. We're missing speed on the boots. That's 12 speed. We're missing accuracy here. That's 29 accuracy. We're missing 29 accuracy at this point. We're also missing um, some survivability in different places. So by the time I finish with him, he should be around about 340 to 345 speed, maybe a little bit faster. And about 60, 650 to 700 accuracy. Because obviously we're going to get life. Uh, we're going to get um, Laura Steel. When, which when you look at the fact that I've got 5% speed. 20% speed. That's going to give him a fair chunk of speed. On top. So that's, that's how he will finish his build. But again it's all about dust. And to be honest I'm not too enthused with dusting this type of banner. Because in all honesty... I would want to find a better one than that. That's like the best of a bad situation. I don't have a faster banner. But ideally I'd want to have something with like triple roll. Something like this type of banner but in speed. That would be my desirable outcome here. But I just don't have the, the artifacts for it yet. So. so it's kind of like what I mean when sometimes you don't. You it's situations where you shouldn't sell rare gear. Is when you go through this situation and think well I actually don't have that many good that's my fastest banner in this faction after four years of playing that's my fastest banner it's actually quite shocking when you think about it that is the fastest banner that I have in accuracy it's really poor you can rework it but it's really low value you just have to farm it Um, I don't, actually. I can have a look. I can have a look. One question that Dutchie was asking was, say like I have 400 speed. Uh, say like I have 400 speed um, Arbiter. He wanted to know how much speed that he would need to carry with the four-piece... Um, essentially with the four-piece uh, Supersonic build, right? Four piece supersonic is basically you get zero you get two points you get two percent per buff that is placed on the team. Uh and he wanted to know how it would work. So one thing you can do is um where is the, the thing there i just gotta find where um where the math was what is his name uh Good. All right. 
So, a bit of math. We'll do a bit of math here, okay? So, um, what we want to do is know how much speed does my our mans need to be in order for me to cut in versus a specific target, okay? Because the supersonic set is going to give me 2% per buff per enemy. So this equation here is essentially what works that out, okay? I just need to check that it hasn't done some sort of weird formula here. Okay, so... I'm just reading the equation a second. Okay, so Y is basically the maximum speed of the enemy champion. Okay, so that would be that. Okay, and then it's going to be... Uh, so the formula is going to be 0 0.448... Um, what does he say? Uh, I wish he was in stream. Let me see if he's available. Maybe he's here. I gotta remember how the stream work. Uh, how the formula works. Short on skills, wrote this formula. He's a genius when it comes to speed ratios. I'm just trying to understand what he meant by X. Oh, you got supersonic here as well. You, you asked for temporal chains. Okay, so 4.95... Aha. Uh -huh. Here's here. Okay, so X is speedy reminds. But how do I write that out in a formula? Sure. So like obviously you put X right next to zero point four four eight. Are you literally saying like like where does the extra where does it like concatenate, if that makes sense? Right, that's what I was missing. The times. <laughs> the, the the formula you sent me doesn't have a times in it. So, that's fine. So, if we just put Amanda's speed there, and then we're minus in 22, divided by 0 0.45045. Okay, so it's like 250. Yeah, see, it didn't have the times. So, what we're basically saying is... Yeah, so the, basically we're trying to use the supersonic set to break the enemy speed tune. Because normally an enemy would speed tune it so that their first champion will go... Uh, their second champion will go with their first champion boosting. So this formula, though, this is for when an Arbiter uses A3 once, right? Sure. Because you've, you've written this as if this is a four buffs with a 30% fill, right? I'm pretty sure. Because you've got 4.95. The problem is Discord messes up the formula when you write it out with times is. So what I want to work out essentially is if I have 400 speed, how fast do I need to make my armands go if I change these values? Yeah, it should be this. But this is specifically working out for an arbiter, which is not what I want. What I want to do is basically go, I got 400 speed of, of an enemy. I need to do it in reverse, essentially. I need to basically work out um, uh, 
uh, what it's going to... Uh, is there a HH Discord server? Uh, well, you can join my one, or you can join the main Discord. You might need six star, six star temporal chains. I don't think so, no. No, no, I don't think so. We can work out exactly how much you need, basically. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm i got to reverse the formula. Um, i got to reverse what he's done with the formula here. So, at the moment, this is basically telling you, like, based on your armands being 350 speed, I guess, what... Like, I suppose if you did this, it would need to be that you'd need to be 348. I'm pretty sure that this is what this is working. It's basically saying, if you have an Arbiter boosting, you would need to be 348. On your Armands, right? Armands would basically gain 24% turn meter to beat it. That's what I believe is happening. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sean Skills. That it's basically, if you have an enemy Arbiter at 400 speed, then you would need 348 with Supersonic to break in. I hate this type of speed turning math when you try to do it in a simple formula. That's the speed. Yeah, exactly. So 348. But that would only be uh, if it's a supersonic Armands with four, with uh, an Arbiter A3, right? So Arbiter A3 is doing like a 0 0.3. Uh, so I should probably do this here. Okay, so 400, 200, uh, we'd have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Tell me a boost. So, what I need to do is um, not include short, uh, not include that. So, short and what I need to do is basically work out. Uh, the buff count in supersonic with a Termia boost. Which this isn't going to do, right? I need the, the more complicated version. If I'm checking this correctly. 4.95. Like, you wrote this originally. Which I'm guessing is times 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 that. Oh, can we have that in black, please? Uh, do you think Ancora Padraig Double Alley Attack could be good for anything? Um, Not in Arena. But you never know. You just will struggle to go first, you know? Like, I believe this is what you wrote, right? Yeah, so we're trying to work out how much you need to cut in with an Arbiter at different speed breakpoints with Supersonic. That's what I'm trying to work out. I'm not so much worried about the others. I don't think there's a good way to find out your arm man speed based on the enemy. I went the other route and found what speed enemy your what speed enemy your X speed arm man's could cut in on. Right, okay. Um <laughs> I've done this. Uh, I, I remember doing the calculator for David Dead, Dead and I cannot remember. Uh, um, I cannot recall the formula. I cannot recall the formula. Um, I don't think it's going to work because. Have a quick little check now. I actually need to update this arena calculator. It's been a bit out of date. Ugh. Hmm. 
Uh, so Arbiter at like 400. So an Arbiter should get you to about 319 requirement. If you're 319, you should breach an Arbiter. Theoretically. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, it's running a true 3433. I just can't remember the math off the top of my head. I thought this would be quite simple to work out. I didn't realize that the, the way it had been worked out was basically in reverse, not the way forward. Yeah, so the next champion would need to be 318, but you're going to gain turn meter, so maybe we'll do this another time. My brain's not really capable of doing this right now. Um, I will probably do, maybe I'll just do a video on it that I can actually spend time to double check the math because that's what I need to do. I have to go through the math to figure it out. But the way that, the, the reason why I say that Supersonic is really good is because sometimes when you need high accuracy, you can't always go super, super fast, right? With Arbiter, you don't need any accuracy. I need really, you, you kind of need survivability. But that's not really a problem. You can just go as fast as you want. But with an Armands, you, you need accuracy. Supersonic can help you get to the accuracy level while still remaining fast. So. Yeah, I it's complicated, Dutchie. Basically, there's a... There's a... The, the arena character on Dead with Jedi. I need to update it with all the new fe features and effects. Um, that does all that math automatically. But it doesn't really, it kind of makes it so that your team won't get cut in, but it doesn't really, like, count what the what you would need to make it cut in. Um, yeah, we can crunch numbers um, tomorrow um, short. That'd be a good idea. Just so that I make sure my math is right. I always mess up a little bit on speed tuning. Unless I get my actual, like, spreadsheet out. Like, actually, that's a quick way of doing it. It's the quickest way of doing it. Um, coming into here. My little speed tune calculator that I have for everything that I need. It's very difficult to know how all this works. Uh, do I have an arena? I'm sure I had an arena one. Yeah, right at the start here. So like, we could have like Arbiter. And then we have Amans. So Arbiter would have 30. It's at 1110 base speed. Amans is like 1108. He'd have a 28% speed aura. So we're just going to put this map up in here. One of 10, one this. Cool. So if we had a 400 speed Arbiter, let's just put this to 50. It's not quite exact. Um, let's just call it Jeff. With 100 base speed, 30% aura. Let's put him in at 250 speed. I think it's like 318. Okay. So let's do this. What's that? That. Okay, so on a basic level, you can see when Arbiter does a boost here, I'm not going to intervene, right? So if I was going at like, say, 290, or like, say like I was going at like, uh, I don't know, 318, 319, okay? 319, I would cut in. But because Arbiter is going to add a boost, she should, what's going on here? I messed up my. No, 7.3. Jeff, what are you doing? Oh, because I'm on the wrong side. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Arbiter will boost 0 0.3, which means that even if I run my, my, my guy down here, 290, 280, 270, like, I always win. Up until, like this point here so i can run my nuka like super slow because of the boosting capacity right i need to double check this math first before we uh proceed let me make sure all this math is working yes yes that's gonna add uh where are you getting extra from uh that should be f4 the error. I'm 
pretty sure that's the way it's going to work. Yeah, there we go. That's a bit better. So, we can see I can run like a 260, 250, 240, 230. At 230, it becomes a bit of a problem. With this 319 cut in. Right, because I'm not boosting anything on my side. Uh, they're getting a 0 0.3 boost, which means that we have this very tight tiebreaker. Let me just make sure these are adding up correctly. Oopsie daisy. That should be L2. Should do it. Should use all the right tick rates. Yeah, good. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. Boost will push me into a 1.22. Yeah. That looks right. Yeah, sure. If you're still here, that looks about right. Where it would need to be, I would need to be going like 319 speed to cut in for the enemy would be 234 would be fine so if i want to go and cut in here at say so the, the issue you've got is it's not so much about how fast the first champion goes it's how fast the second champion goes so in a speed tuned banner if i had a 300 and um 18 what you normally want to do is go if my speed lead is 432 speed or 400 if basically if my speed lead is 399 how much would I need to make sure my second champion always goes before the enemy? That would be about 319 speed. Okay. That 319 speed guarantees that no matter, even if I go to 399, I, I, I can't cut in. Okay. So all you actually want to know is how much speed do you need to interrupt this connection? Okay. So if I'm equal to the arbiter, how much speed is supersonic giving me? How much extra speed am I saving by having supersonic? So what we can do is basically work out when this buff happens, I'm going to get four sets of 2% because Arbiter is going to boost four times. Now, Arbiter is a bad example, but we can use it. So I'm going to get 0 0.2468. I'm going to get 8% boost. So you can see... That supersonic immediately does it, but how good is it? Let's have a look. 380. Not good with one buff. So 386. Oops, 386. 386 is fine. 385, 384. Three. What is going on? This sounds like a disaster. So 382. So effectively, at this point, supersonic is saving me. 18 speed. Now, obviously, if we had something like Siffy, a 115, say like it was backed up by a three, like a Wukong Aura, right? Imagine we had a Wukong Aura here. Okay, and she was running at 400 speed, and I was running my Armands, but this time we're going to get 24% boost. Well, now I can go down to a lot lower. Look how much lower I can go. Three hundred and thirty-four speed before I can cut in, and let me just check what the enemy ratio would be if it's a Siffy. <laughs> it wouldn't actually be this; it'd be that. What a death! Send me a booster. Yes, this would need to be three hundred and fifty-three point six four speed. Right, so we can go even lower. So normally you would need to be 354 speed. Okay, that's how much you would need to be to guarantee you get an extra turn. For example, if I didn't have this, right, it always goes. I, I would have to go all the way up to 399. That's the only way it beats it, you know? Well, actually, that's not quite right. Let me just check. Uh, is it because I got a different base speed over here? 353, it should be. Is it close? Yeah, it is. So it's 355. It's probably just base speed 3. 356. 357. Uh, why is that not changing? Why is that? To me, it was 0 0.1. 
Well, when the romance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba -ba -ba. That should work. Why am I cutting in? I shouldn't be cutting in at 350 speed. Something's not right here. It's ten percent that Siffy gives, right? Or am I thinking? Yeah, it's oh, I know why. Increase speed buff. Bah, 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 bah. Increase speed buff. And it's not going to apply here, is it? No, that's really annoying. <laughs> that's annoying. Okay, hang on. Uh, let's flip it around a second. Let's put Arbiter, let's put Sippy down here. Yeah. And let's put our mans up here. It's easier this way. Zero speeds. Zero. Uh, let's put 115. 120%. So zero. This would be about 354 at 400. And then he would need to be breaching this. And then we've got like this 0 0.1. But she's going to give a speed buff. So that's very important. So there we go. See, um, I can't cut in at this point at 399 because it's 354. If it was 352 or 351, it's going to allow me to cut in. Okay. Our man's not base speed of that, it's about 108, so for example, it'd be like that. So at this point here, what do I need to cut in? That's really what I would need to know. So how much can I get? Well, I will get 0 0.24. I'll get 24% every time Siffy uses the A2, because I get three buffs on four enemies. Three times two times four is 12, uh, is 24%. So now we can drop the speed right down. Look how slow we can go. 335 speed. So effectively, this is saving me. I would need 399. Supersonic set here is saving me about 64 speed. So in answer to your question, Duchy, how much speed would uh, my our man's need to breach a 400 speed Siffy with triple buffs? That would be 335, but Arbiter, a lot less. You'd need a lot more, basically. So if it was Arbiter, again, it would be 110, 30%, 30%, 400 speed. It would only be a 0 0.3. There wouldn't be any of the speed buff. It would actually be only 0 0.08, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you'd need to go something like... This would be normally... Uh, boom, boom, arbiter. Uh, turn me to control. 318. This would normally be 318.49. So, oops, wrong one. 319. It's only going to save me, like, 18 speed. That's kind of like how it works. It's only going to save you about 18 speed here. So, 4 buffs is equivalent to 18 speed. I guess if you've got 12 buffs, 18 times 3 is 54. So, it's roughly the way you can kind of, on a, on a very, very basic level, very basic level, because of the way that it works. About 18 speed per four buffs is the supersonic value. Every four buffs is equal to around about 18 speed in your build. Roughly. 
How much almonds? <laughs> Does that answer your question, Dutchie? What about five star temporal blessing? So, on actually with Armand's wearing the blessing, you mean? So he would basically, you're saying, if he was wearing it at five star, it would decrease the enemy's speed by five percent for each active buff they have. So here, for example, all it would do is it would do a zero point eight five. Uh, so for, for actually for Arbiter, it would only be zero point nine five. Because you don't get the 2 meter drop. Uh, so it would be... Three se two, 379. It's going to save you like 3 speed. Temporal Chains 5 star against Arbiter is going to save you like 3 speed. It's not very good at 5 star. Now, if it was against Siffy, uh, let's see. Siffy would be 0 0.1. She's going to give 1.3. But then we're going to decrease the enemy speed. So it's, it's actually a little bit complicated because it's... It's like 1.3 times... Uh, 1 minus 0 0.15. So net 1.15, I think it's like that, roughly. And you're going to get 0 0.4, which is at 115, 28%, 28%. Cool, and then this would need to be 353. And this would be 325, 310, oops. Three twenty, which would be about eighty saving. Right, eighty saving. Because you're not dropping turn meters, you're slowing them down. So normally it would have required you to be about. Three three five, so it's saving you, fifteen speed. So against the Siffy Duchess, Temporal Chains is saving you about 15 speed. Against an Arbiter, it's about 3 speed. But that's specifically because of um, the um, the speed buff that Siffy gives. Now, Duchess doesn't give you a speed buff, right? Duchess does not give you a speed buff. She just gives you a perfect fail. So in that sense, you would actually have it at like this. So against a Duchess, where you actually get no turn meter boosting, all you get is three buffs. Against a Duchess, you can go a lot slower. Probably, I mean, potentially like as crazy as like... Uh, what would I need the Duchess to be actually? One second. Speeds. I mean, the Duchess would need you to be like this speed, see? So 319 would be the Duchess, but that's because the Duchess doesn't speed tune, uh, like speed boost. The chances are you're not running double 400 speed, but in a properly speed tuned manner, a 400 speed Duchess would require your second champion to be faster. Depending on the, like that's that's probably just like, or uh, base stat difference, right? Because Duchess's base stat is different here. Um, but you're never going to have a second champion going that fast with Duchess, which is why Duchess is not a very good comparison. The better off comparison is is Siffy because um, she gives you the speed boost as well. Most people run a fast Duchess. A, sp a fast Siffy. Yeah, so basically, 320... 
uh, versus what you would need, which is 400 normally. So you're saving yourself 80. Yeah, it'd be, it would be like basically one little. It's just, it's it's um, what it is SGT. It's it's about the aura. So if this champion has one one five and this one has uh, this champion has one one five and this one has a hundred, then twenty eight percent is going to give more to the one one five. So if you want Jeff to go before that, Jeff's base the speed has to be has to be higher than the actual arbiter because uh, than the the Duchess because when you get into battle, Duchess will gain more from the aura that puts that speed over the other one. So, so yeah, so that's that's the value of um, Supersonic here. Effectively against a triple buffer, it's about 80 speed. That's with temporal chains. It's around about 18 speed per four buff. 18 to 20 speed per four buff. So, that's roughly the take of it. Which is why I quite like it. Because I think in a scenario where you don't have as much... Um, capacity for um, in a scenario where you, you can't guarantee you're going to go first which is to be honest a lot of the time it's quite handy to have because you need you need accuracy right so because you need accuracy here you're going to always have to sacrifice speed so like at 327 for example that is putting me right in the gold locks window for a 400 Siffy. Because a 400 Siffy will need me to do... Let me just double check these numbers here. So 400 Siffy without temporal chains. I'll need to be going at... Three hundred and thirty-five speed. So right now, here's how crazy it is. Three twenty-seven. If I just find ten more speed, I will cut in on any Siffy that is running a 28 percent aura. The reason why I picked twenty-eight percent is Wukong's twenty-eight percent and lots of others. I will cut in on any Siffy that uses A two at four hundred speed, at three hundred and thirty-five, because of this one supersonic set. Because of this one supersonic set, I will cut in. Uh, Wi-Fi, probably because it just gave me 10% speed. It probably could make a better speed pairing with just having one set here rather than having another speed set. I mean, Siffy could, Darky. Which is why I say four-piece stone skin and four-piece supersonic is the way to go, Darky. That's what I was trying to suggest. That's the best way forward. I just don't have the stone skin accessories. If I had the stones and accessories, I would build our man's four skin, uh, a four-piece stone skin, four-piece supersonic. I think that is the best build. Uh, if sheep works well, the, the you it only worked because it came out of sheep. Nobo, I returned back to the original form. That's why. No, of course. But here's the thing, Dimitri. If you are facing Siffies that are running three eighty-five, which is pretty common. Right, my arbiter is 397 or 394. So 385 these days, especially with a six-star Siffy, it's pretty, pretty common. Then if we do it on a 385, you absolutely can go... Let's see, 325. Oh, it actually still needs to be three... You still need to be 335, actually, because it would depend on what you run your secondary as. At 385, it would need to be less. Um, so... Uh, at 385, let's just say she's in three speed. 339. So you could go 320. So if someone is at 385 speed, your 320 supersonic armands will cut in before the enemy. So long as they've not overtuned the speed of their second champion, right? So if they've gone and put their second champion at 340, then you'll at uh, 350, then you'll need to go 330 speed, essentially. Um when's the next Soulstone event? I don't know. Probably in a week or two, I would have thought.
yeah, that's the problem, Benjamin. I don't have enough stone skin accessories, which is why I haven't done it. I do have some. Like, I've got, you know, a resistant stone skin one there. I've got some here with accuracy, but I don't have the banner. And I would only do it if I could sacrifice the ring and the amulet. Because I, I, because I don't have the banner, I do have some protection sets. But I don't have any stone skin sets. So that is why I haven't done it. Because I don't have the accessories. If you can get the accessories... Then I would suggest you try and put like a supersonic. Um, like if you think right now, I've got two supersonic and two up here, so there's enough space for four. I mean, I could actually do it. I don't need a. You don't actually need stone skin accessories. You you could actually. I could just basically strip out my Slayer piece here, the perception and this, and just do four pieces of stone skin. I don't actually need this extra supersonic here. I probably just don't have a very fast set of. Stone skin gear. So, for example, I would be looking for an accuracy chest with speed, like this, but with speed in stone skin. So, something fast. I don't have anything fast. That would be the first step. So, that automatically that creates a problem here. I don't have a fast accuracy chest, whereas here I do. This is what I want to see. So because of that, then, it puts pressure, which is why having the accessory is really handy, because I can put one stone skin accessory, and it makes this build much more flexible. I can have a spare slot to have something like a Slayer set that has this really good roll, for example. Yeah, it's now called the Slayer set. Yeah. Uh, what would be the benefit of having four-piece stone uh, stone skin on man's if you are planning on cutting in? Because you might not be able to. And you don't get Sifier when slept, as Dutchie says. Like, you can't touch the Armands at all. You can't drop his turn meter. You might be able to lock him out, but you can't drop his turn meter. You can't sleep him. You can't control him. You can try and remove his buffs at your own risk, which is why I've gone Polymorph. Because by the time I get up to five, Polymorph with Accuracy Champions is very good. This is pretty good. It's a very strong possibility that this will activate. So, uh, I haven't got him Masteries yet. I will get Masteries on him. Once I get down to here, 50 accuracy, loads more bonuses there. Um, I don't, they, they're these kind of a filler spots, none of them are really that good. Uh, probably Evil Eye, I'll probably take that as well. The only downside with Evil Eye is you always open with this ability, which kind of de devalues Evil Eye, because you're essentially stealing turn meter already. So maybe I won't go Evil Eye, maybe it's not worth it. Um, yeah, I mean, Siffy's always strong, I always take this because of this, so... Yeah, the plan is, though, Benjamin, what happens if there is a Siffy? Also, got to remember, Arbiter, for example, is only one set of buffs. So you can't, like, depend on the Supersonic to actually give you it all the time. It's just if you're facing a lot of Siffies, it will. Uh, right, so what are we going to do? We've got to fight some tag team quickly. So let's just blast some very quick wins here. And then we'll probably get on to the Hydra stuff. I do just need to run something in Dragonair in the back end as well. Thirty-nine out of a hundred. Wow, you're doing better than me, Crazy Thunder. I need for my team here. Forty nine. Wow, you guys, you might actually get that champion soon. Once in a blue moon. You're out of chess. Ah.
And what's the point of cutting it in with a block debuffer? Well, it depends. If you have a Siffy, for example, and Siffy A2s you cut in, maybe you want to take out the lockout. Well, you sheep the lockout, you remove all of their buffs, and now your other champion, which is equally fast, can cut in. Right? Because you've got him at 320, you might have someone else at like 310. Whereas his other champion isn't that fast. Because you've taken out his second champion, or you've taken out his win condition, or you've taken out like the, the ultimate death knight in stone skin. Giving him a chance to get a turn is very big. And also keep in mind, if you stone skin the second fastest champion, when they come out of their stones... Uh, when, sorry. If you sheep the second fastest champion, when they come out of Polymorph, he's going to put one of their abilities on cooldown and give himself turn meter. So if that's like a Kaima, you get 70% turn meter fill. 60%. I think it's, it's on a cooldown. Average 30 to 40% extra turn meter fill. I mean, it's not like we're saying it's like the answer to every problem in the world. I'm simply saying that um, that is a... I think that is the best build to make him work. Personally. Uh, okay. Sorry, I'm just running something quietly in the background here that I just need to run. And it would be good to carry on. Uh, they're not immune to turn meter steal or so you A2, steal all the turn meter, then sheep, then your whole team goes. Yeah. That's the idea. You cut in, you A2 steal everything, then you put something to sheep, then you steal all their buffs at the same time. Like, that's how powerful he is. And also, you've got to remember the only thing that can stop Polymorph, the sheep, is resistance. He doesn't attack, so he's affinity friendly. He doesn't, um, it's like, it's not partial chance. It will not get blocked by stone skin. The only thing that can stop that sheep is if you resist it. Otherwise it will happen all the time. 3% of course, that could be a factor. But the only thing that can stop it is if you resist, pretty much. Otherwise it's GG lights out. Only thing you're going to remember, by the way, is you can get polymorphed back on his A2 because you stun. So you can get polymorphed from the A2. Exactly, Benjamin. Now you're starting to see why we were sitting here when he was announced going, this stuff is crazy strong because of all these little, little nuances. Even to the extent, right? Even to the extent that this ability, unlike other polymorphs, this ability can't be transferred by Yumiko's Hex. You can't reflect this sheep debuff. So there are some strategies out there that people use um, Yumiko's Hex. You can't, you can't even do that with it. It will, it, it's, it's immune to that effect. Yeah, the A2 can weak it, the A3 can't. The A3 is not an attack. So... Yeah, you won't be able to stun. So yeah, that's true, Dachi. Against Siffy, you don't even get polymorphed because stealing turn meter is not a debuff. Therefore, you don't get polymorphed. Oh, whatever. Get a turn here. Let's find out. Uh, you know what I'm going to have to do now? 
We're going to have to watch out for these one man, our, our mans is, in case we can never get a turn and kill him. That's a problem. Didn't think about that. Uh, three without losing a champion. Got it. Yeah, even Ultimate Death Knight. Ultimate Death Knight cannot stop that sheep unless he resists. It's the only thing that stops it. You hit Yumiko with my sheep from Amans. And it went on my on your rotus. I'm pretty sure I can't sniper because I've checked the code. It says it's immune to debuff transfer. So I'm like 99% certain it can't. I unless it's bugged, like it the coding specifically has, has an exclusion clause for transferring debuffs, which is what Yumiko does. So, hmm, okay, maybe, but it specifically has an exclusion clause. Maybe they've coded it out. Maybe they changed it. I don't know. Uh, I checked when it first came out and that was the case. So. Like polymorph can be transferred, but his sheep can't. No, it's a transfer. It is coded as a transfer effect, Pavel. So she will transfer the debuff before placing it on herself. There's there's two types. There's transferring debuffs and there's reflecting debuffs. The Riho reflects the debuff, so she takes it and then sends it back. Yumiko doesn't. She checks and sends it before she checks as a transfer. Which is why, for example, protected debuffs can be transferred by... Yumiko, but Riho can't because Riho has already taken the protection effect. So she's already got that debuff that, that she can't remove. Yeah, Tormins are getting used a lot against Armands. So if the, you know, Tormins are a big problem for Armands. Deflection won't work, Nobo. You can't use deflection. It doesn't work. It's immune. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying, Nobo. Deflection doesn't work. Or maybe the stun, but I wouldn't. I I would never pick deflection for the stun. Uh, Tormins will freeze on man's. I think Tormin works on stone uh, on stealing. I think it works on stealing. I, I, it's hard for me to remember, but I'm pretty sure it works on stealing turn meter as well. Because stealing turn meter is coded differently to increasing turn meter and decreasing turn meter, right? They're separate effects. So. Um, not really, because you can't really afford to have both of them in your team, Benjamin. That's the thing. Right? You pick two of those. Where's your revivers going to fit in there? Where's your damage dealers going to fit in there, right? That's just too much to counter him. The only counter to... The only viable counter to our mans is you pick four people in stone skin. It's the only counter. Or you resist him. So you either out resist him or you put four people in stone skin. That's the only answer you have. Because otherwise he will win the fight. There's nothing you can do. So. That's why you'll probably see now people move away from bolster more towards stone skin. Because Narcissus, they can't ban the Narcissus, so therefore they can't pick Bolster, so therefore they have to go Stone Skin. Uh, Bombs meta would work if there wasn't a Marichka. The moment Marichka comes in, you can't use Bombs. Why would Pedraig be good against him? Yeah, but at least you still got three people, Ginger. That's the thing. At least you've got three people that you can still do something with. Yeah, Marius would be a pretty good counter. Um, no, because they never get a turn, Cornell. That's that's the problem. They'll never get a turn. Once he has control of the fight, you can't get a turn against our mans. 
The only reason why my Armands can't is because he's not booked. Once he's booked, they'll nobody ever gets a turn against our mans. A properly built supersonic our mans, you will never get a turn. Isn't Ronda immune to Tumi reduction? I don't think she is. I could be wrong. And again, Mithral is only as good as if you don't bring an increased accuracy. If you bring a Lady Makage, increased accuracy, now you're in trouble. A, a Lady Kimmy. Increase accuracy. Now you're in trouble. When the A3 is off cooldown. Okay. Well, there is. Marius is immune to two meter reductions. Cool. Yeah, when it's available. So basically it means she can't be turn meter reduced at the start. But the problem is you're never going to build your Ronda at 300 speed. So what will happen is he will do his A2, drop everyone else, and then your Ronda's like, I'm about to take a turn. You'll go, no, 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 I've just stolen 300% turn meter. And he will polymorph the Ronda and then the Ronda's out of the fight. So it's not like it's a counter. It doesn't really help the situation. It just means that she can't be stolen. But he's still going to get that extra turn. He's still going to reduce his cooldown basically to two turns. Then he'll polymorph someone. When you come out, you lose one of your damage abilities, probably your A2. And then Ronda's basically a bot. So the problem persists. And you're not going to build your Ronda with resistance. So she's, he's going to take the cooldown of one of your random skills. Absolutely guaranteed. So, yeah, she's not immune to the stun. Or all, all the, all the polymorph. Boom. Lovely. Prepping for CVC, which is great. Uh, that's cool. We can give it an extra hour yet. Um, bum, bum, bum. Cool. Cool. Uh, I don't need to do any more tag. Do I have done that right? I think I've done this. I haven't done any of that. We'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, it's done. The really cool thing about the Sand Devil Turn Attack Tournament, by the way, that they've put prisms, they actually have reduced the amount you need for this tier 2 stone. This is normally 3,000. So you actually save energy for getting this tier 2 stone, which is great, by putting this prism up here. It's kind of useful. He's good. I mean, the problem is what you're trying with that, that like approach, it, where you're basically like, well, if you pick the champion that can't be turn meter reduced... You need multiple ones. What is he? Skinwalker, right? Like, sure. He can't have his damage. His, um... He's immune to stun. Great. But he hasn't got any turn meter. So he's never going to take a turn. So I steal his turn meter. And then it's like, oh, cool. He's immune to stun. Well, I'll just polymorph him then. So he can never get around. Because what you've got to remember, okay? You steal everyone's turn meter... They get put to zero turn meter. Then you sheep them. They've got to go through a 150 speed cycle to get a turn as the sheep. Do you know how difficult that is against champions that are running 300, 250 speed? You actually get that double punishment of losing all your turn meter into that stone skin. Now, nine times out of ten, you stone skin some, uh, you you polymorph someone. Sorry, not stone skin. I'm using, mixing up my words. Nine times out of ten, you will polymorph the higher turn meter. But if you steal everyone's turn meter and you poly and you put polymorph on them they're never coming out of sheep they're never going to get a turn unless you kill them out of sheep it's, it's just never going to happen because it's going to take forever for them to come back because it's 150 speed when you're in that sheep form it's very hard to recover from yeah exactly when they come out he gets his he gets his uh, passive trigger gives him like um Gives him like a 40% turn meter fail. Then he A2s you again. You get stunned and you go back into the polymorph. It's very, very strong. Yeah, so the, the, the main counters with Armand is you ban him. If you don't ban him, you need four people in stone skin or you need to basically kill him before he gets going. So you need to outspeed him. If you let him get a turn, you're done for. It's going to be really hard for you to recover. 
just simply put it's just it, it's not a it's the brutal honesty of if you get caught you're done for there's nothing you can really do uh curse city's done doom tower keys are done clan boss great so we can focus now exclusively on hydra on hydra yeah i'm gonna leave it a, an hour or so nobo Uh, you can run the theory past me. Yeah, Benjamin. Do I think the next fusion will be worth it? Well, I can't really tell you until I see the fusion. But, you know. Uh, Saf, I'm having an Angkor build issue. I get, I got the one star for her today. But would it be better to have five piece protection with two righteous? 300 speed or 260 speed with much higher HP? She needs speed. Um, but two, 300 is not enough, really. So maybe 260 is better with resistance, Russian. I do like to go fast, but you need her to survive. So. How would I design a, a counter to our mans? Uh, it would need to do something like if an enemy steals my turn meter. So it would need to be like, I'm immune to turn meter stealing. If an enemy tries to steal my turn meter, grants me an extra turn. But they already have built a counter, right? This is the counter. Whenever an enemy attempts to decrease this champion's turn meter, he will counterattack using Enfeeble. This is the counter. Because you'll basically then go into the second form and smash people. But this kind of concept where it's like, I'm immune. If you try to, I get a turn. That's how you counter a man's. Like, he's going to be really, really good. Which is why I am pushing for it big time. So hopefully tomorrow I'll be on part two of the missions. So we're not going to do both Hydra Keys tonight. We're just going to do one Hydra Key tonight. So. The team will be a Neri, Cardia, Cardinal, Pedraic, Farrakhan. They die, a Neri revives the Cardinal, revives the CDs. Why are you trying... Just just out of concept, Benjamin. Why aren't you just running a burner with your Aniri? It would just be so much easier just to run a burner with your Aniri. You're on the five mythical artifacts. Yeah. So these five mythical artifacts, I can't really show you, but um, the ones that it's like you need to get mythical artifacts, technically... It should require you about 100 runs. Because on average, you get one mythical artifact per 20 runs. So it should... Like, that's 5 or 6 star, by the way. That's not 6 star. It's just 5 or 6 star. So on average, it should take you 100 runs. So about 2,000 energy. It took me about 2,500 for both. Yeah, Marius Multipliers are on the website. It's like 0 0.03 on his max HP. But it's good enough. He might be a pretty good damage dealer in Arena, to be honest. If you can scale him well. Because he's got a pretty good base defense. He'd be tanky. He'd be, be a great go second. He's got Enfeeble as well. You know, so as a as kind of like a, a, a DPS option, he's not bad. He won't do crazy damage, but he's not bad. You also can, like, self-buff into an extra turn as well. So, very fast. So, yeah, it could be quite good. My Marius is going to become the second Newt of my account. He will go again with Newt in every single boss and just basically make every boss for me now a 20-second boss. He's just going to be super easy. That's what he'll do. You're way above 100 runs. It, it's an RNG fest. All I can tell you is on average, it should be about two, 100 runs for five. On average. It's just That's a stage 10 hard as well, by the way. It's very important I say that. That's a stage 10 hard. Not stage lower. Stage 10 hard. You don't need the blessings on her. I will say, though, if you uh, have fully booked her, then you could be a problem. But if you have an area that isn't fully booked, then maybe that's not... Maybe that's the issue. Yeah, so... If you have an area that isn't booked... 
you can run that at 25 without booking her and you don't need the blessing. They, on my on my channel, there's three videos. Let me see if I can find it a second. Um, and then we need to get into Hydra. I think it's this one. Gotta wait for an advert. Age double double check. What stage are we at? Stage. Just check, because I got three videos. I can never remember what all three of them do. Uh, okay, this one's stage 24. I don't want that one. That one. That's the one you want. That's the one. There's another variant of it as well. That is like five books. Mine's a six book one. I can't remember what the five book one is. It's all about how many books you put in this passive. So you just have to be careful about that. Uh, right. So what are we doing? So I have got now my new hard team. This is my new hard team going forward. This is going to replace what I previously had with my hard team, which was uh, a whisper team. Right, we had these teams originally that we had planned. This team is now gone. So we got two teams here to basically make a uh, final team. Now, the, the nightmare team, I'm pretty happy with. Ah, perfect time in shooter. My, my, my compadre in Hydra pushing, perfect time. Um, yeah, so this one here is my Nightmare team. I'm pretty happy with this team. I don't think I would change it. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Uh, but we have the option of reworking some of the features of this Brutal Hydra team now. Because essentially, uh, if I just edit this team to basically remove the people that uh, we are locking out, like that. We have all these available to us. We also have Grand Oak Padraig we could potentially use. We have Panda we could use. He's pretty good actually for Hydra. Didn't really, I didn't really give him as much respect for Hydra, but he is pretty good. Um, we could use Pad Padraig here. Uh, so I obviously want to lead it by Rabbit. I want the Rabbit to lead. Because I think Rabbit is pretty good. Now, I do feel like putting Nekmothar with Rabbit is a bit weird. Uh, if you can't do sand level 15, is there any point doing the attack? Um, well, you can use my turn-based calculator to figure out um, if you can do it. Let me let me get your share link. Um, share. So if you want to know how much energy it's going to cost you, you can use that calculator. That will allow you to pick the stage. Uh, you need to make a copy. So just make a copy of it. You can pick the stage and how many turns it's taking you. And it'll tell you how much energy it's going to cost you. So if you want to use that one, it's pretty handy. Uh, you can't book her revive because of the way that the, the amount of turns that she takes. If you book it too much, then she will revive at the wrong time. That's why. It's about how many turns she's taking. You did send it to me, didn't you, Shooter? Let me have a look. Let me find your DMs. It's been a while. There we go. That's only hard. Okay, yeah. So Venus Gurp tuck in hard. You made a little graph for me. Look at this. Look, look what Shooter did for me. Look how great this guy is. Uh, shoot, shooter's in my clan. He's actually top leading the clan right now with our best damage. Made a little grid. Made a little grid for us to make a decision on. Now we need to change the context a little bit because Venus Gurp tuck is in hard, which is great. 
So uh, we can obviously use this right-hand side. Makage is in Nightmare. So we need to look at this grid up here. The only difference is Shooter. Uh, I'm thinking about using Razzlevark in Brutal instead of Hard. Because obviously the Hard team is kind of like the normal team, which is Trunder. So I don't know if that changes your suggestions. I don't know if like a two-star Razzlevark is going to be able to cut it. Um, and I don't want to break my Nightmare team because I'm pretty happy with my Nightmare team. And obviously Pedraig is, is something to consider as well. What happened to your Trunder team? It's done. It worked, Krizzle. So, Trend, I mean, the Trunder team is fine because all we do is we just take out the, the hard team and they, that has to move up to Brutal. And Razzlevar can do Brutal okay. It might be that he just needs a bit of survivability. Um, like, the biggest problem is a lot of the Brutal team that you have is actually my Nightmare team. Yeah, I survived 1,500. I mostly did. I made a mistake. I got to like 1,300 turns. Um, so like... Uh, Trunder, Kaimar... Yeah, you can do a Kaimar team. You probably want Trunder, Kaimar, Emic, Nia, Arbiter... Lydia. So one of the Kaimars probably gets replaced by Nia because Nia can be reset, but Kaimar can't. 2 billion, yeah. 2.2 .2 billion on normal. Uh, so we've got Pedraig as an option here. So... I feel like, basically, everything bar Val on the left is problematic. I could use a Whisper instead of Val, but it, it would need to be an AoE weaken. Lana Tharl. Lana wasn't in your suggestions. I'm looking at this grid and you didn't have Lana Tharl. Oh, I see him now. Sorry, I see him. He's at the bottom row. I found him. Sneaking away in the hard team. Yeah. She doesn't need to be. Um... She just needs to have a good setup. Like, the biggest problem is, like, if you bring Razzlevarg, what you get is, is uh, you get increased speed, right? Great. You get increased speed, increased accuracy, you get decrease, uh, you get leech, and then you get some damage. She's very good for damage. But what you don't have is, like, the decrease speed the Necmo gives. Um, so it, I got to basically support the rabbit to make it work. So we kind of need block buffs, which means Ugo is a consideration because I just don't have many block buff options um, to, to pair with it. We need a Provoker. Now, I could decide to. One of the things I was thinking about doing was almost like going, take Islin out and bring Nekmo in in a Provoke set. But I, I just don't know. For some reason, something tells me that Nekmo and Rab Rab Nekmo and Razzlebug together just isn't very efficient. And we do have the Pedraig, right? So... We do have this dude now who's going to be able to give us, like, two meter boosting as well. So it's like, the problem is both Nekmo and Pedrive don't really fit with the rabbit in my brain. Like, they don't fit with the rabbit. Night, Jay. Yeah, Islin has the decrease speed as well. Uh, if you're five star, probably five star. You got a choice. You either go relentless, phantom touch, or you go savage, lethal. But you don't have the crushing rend, which is a problem. If you were six star, I definitely recommend crushing rend. But um, at five star, probably phantom touch, and you could go phantom touch and lethal with helm smasher. That's probably fine. Um, keep in mind, Shooter, my Trunder team is, like, 60% power. Like, the biggest problem with my Trunder team here is that, um, where is it? This team here is only on normal because Trunder's not booked. 
So right now, for example, Trenda is missing attack percentage, attack percentage, crit damage. She's missing this ascension and she's not booked. No problem, Shai. So, um, when I finish the booking and also get like Gurptuk booked up as well, like Gurptuk at the moment is not in a not in a very good build. He's not got any souls. He's not in a protection build. He's not booked. He has no masteries. So once I add that in, and I optimize further the Emic, because Emic is. Um, also suboptimal at the moment in terms of the way that it's built. He's not built pr properly. I can add a bit more damage. Once I optimize it further, I reckon I can get it to like three, like two billion on hard, which means that probably will overwhelm anything that you can do. Like, cause, like if I look at your hard team at the moment, like you're doing 849 million. I'm pretty sure I can beat that with the Trender team once I get everything in the right place. At the moment, it's not in the right place. Um, Which is obviously painful for me to tell you but um yeah like this is the type of brutal team i can see like yeah archer coming in here as the, the provoker i don't know i just my my nightmare team is really good i'm happy with my nightmare team i just don't want to touch any of these champions so it's kind of like i need to work around it like no lydia is a bit of a problem it could be i adapt going forward shooter but um at the moment i just want to try this uh this out Tumor Seer can be good for any difficulty. She's good for any difficulty. Obviously, she'll benefit more from having squishier targets, but... Yeah, it's, it's a sad case, isn't it, Shooter? I'm only doing it so we can guarantee us our, our wins. That's, that's the only reason why I built it, so I can guarantee us wins for once instead of getting, you know, destroyed. I got the mastery in the end, Duchy. I did get the mastery before I saved the run, so she's got the 12% um, the mastery now. Uh, you can book Elva or Padraig, who's more important. I would say Elva. Elva's more important. Um, yeah, so it's just basically like, how do I balance this team? You know, Shamael's kind of in here. Um, Padraig can't really deal with... Padraig can't really deal with Torment Head. That's the problem. I don't have Kirill in the ring, I know. So, it's just how do I balance the team? At the moment, I feel like the team's not very balanced. Yeah, double Harima is pretty strong. I, I agree. Um, what's the three with the monster hunter? So, we got provoke, decrease speed. We have uh, decreased defense, uh, increased defense, shield, and block debuffs. All of it's protected. And then Rathalos is the main damage dealer. We're using Michinaki's burn paired with um, M uh, Mikage's ally attack to basically burn everyone up and then... Rathalos is going to do some crazy damage. Do you need Chris if you have Padraig? Uh, they're kind of different champions. Uh, Feral's a great replacement for Gurptuk, yes. Feral is probably better than Gurptuk a little bit, or you'd want to use them both together if you could, but it's very difficult to put them both together. Um, so. I, you shouldn't have needed to book more because the revive is fine. It was only the passive that you could, it was either the passive or the revive or, or the, uh, the revive that needed to be. You have both no Trunder to debate on builds. Okay. Uh, well, you, Trunder can't... If you haven't got a Trunder, you can't run that Trunder team. Right? That, that's the thing. Like, Trunder is so quintessential for that. If you haven't got the Trunder, it doesn't work. Oh, okay. It is frustrating they only put dust on 25. I'll agree. They should have put it on 20, at least. Like, I, I would have put dust starting from, like, stage 20. 
or something, but only getting one and then it gets better as you climb. So at least you can do it at like 24, for example. That's what I would have done personally. But, you know, I think with a brain. Playroom, think with a credit card, so. <laughs> Trend is progressive. Tr Nobo, don't play the Playroom line. <laughs> Nobo, you are not, like, this isn't commission. You don't get paid by Playroom to promote this. What are you doing? <laughs> don't encourage them. Hey, Noda. Uh, do you think we'll Pedrai would destroy all the max HP? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. I mean, if you can get like... Uh, have you got a five-star Brimstone Pedrai, Benjamin? Because that could work well if you've got Brimstone. Yeah, Cantra is very inconsistent with decreased speed. I would not want to require her to do it because you kill the heads too quickly. I don't have Valkan, unfortunately, no. I mean, hopefully Russian. I don't want to run it. It might work, Benjamin. You can give it a go. It's not the craziest thing anyone's come up with. Um, you know, you will reset the Cardinal, which is great. It could work really well. Yeah, it could do. It's not going to be very quick, though, but it could at least work. Uh, what, hex op op ugh, what hex options do I have? Um, quite a lot. We could run Marinix. I mean, we could run this. It's an option. We could run that. It does a lot of damage. It's just whether or not he lives. I mean, I suppose that the living problem is solved by the six star now because he's quite tanky, you know? But that is an interesting option as well because he would give me Hex. I wonder how strong he is, actually. Let's have a look. Let's see how well he can do against Brutal. Uh, so we'll just run like this. Something like that. Mm. Just run Lydia for a second. We'll run Thrala. Mm. We'll run... Need a block buff, so we'll have to run an Ugo. I really want to try and get that Ostrox. He's a he's a champion I'd really like to get my hands on. Ostrox Bone Glaive. Um, so what do we got? Hex, increased defense, shield, cleanse, decreased defense, weaken, block buffs, damage, speed buff. Everything other than a decreased speed is what we have here. And provoke, so let's just throw Ezlin in for now. Well, the problem is Vals and AoE decrease attack and also AoE... Um... Uh, the problem is Val is a um, increase, a decrease attack and a weaken, so it's a lot to replace, you know. I'm gonna love this. Uh, okay. Kind of lost my decrease attack here, which kind of sucks, but. Not bad without decrease attack. Honestly, the biggest problem with this is setup, but. That was a big whack. It also doesn't help. Um, that we have Torment up from the start. Obviously, I haven't run a Torment solution here, so... Oh, Rabbit took an absolute... 
pound in then. Once we can kill Mystery Pad, we've got a chance. Run into like turn 25. The nice thing about um, Ruel is he can actually kill this Torment Head because he bails himself. That is the nice thing with Ruel. Alright, we got rid of the Torment Head now. That was the biggest hurdle. See what we can do now. Don't miss this provoke. Thank you, Islin. Yeah, we're in brutal right now. We're just testing uh, the concept of a very, very badly underleveled, powered six star um, Ruel. Because he's currently like mostly like 12, level 12 gear. Because he hasn't been upgraded from a, an artifact enhancement event right now. Drop to meter. Oh, well, Rabbit died. That's the only downside. There's no decreased attack in this team. So <laughs> Rabbit just got absolutely wrecked before I even had a chance to fully test it. You know, that is the, the thing about um, Val is he's bringing the decreased attack as well as like a lot of the survival and stuff i might actually be able to test this at some point can we finish this off nice i mean the damage is not too bad considering um it's kind of like a scuffed run this is doing one million damage per turn it's not actually terrible The key thing is the Ruel always has to have four hexes out. If there's no hexes out for Ruel, then it's a bit of a problem. And you can just see, like, Mischief Pad is out of control right now. Which is, you know, not great. You know, 681k. It's a pretty good hit. Uh, let's make sure we don't get reflect. We don't want to deal with that. Some cloud. Should we get that? Uh, that's Islin. Stratagos Islin. Are we going to get a turn with Islin? No, nope, we're not. There we go. That's... So again, see, here's the problem. Because this requires four enemies to be under target for it to be ignored defense, I actually can't use his A3 yet. Because I need all of them to be under um, Hex for me to be able to do it. So now I can, because this is why a second Hex would be important. Uh, I might as well just protect my team here. Now I can do some damage. You know, it's not its not the worst damage in the world. It certainly could be better. But we are testing this in subpar environments. Like, what, I want, what I'm trying to see is if I can get it to a point where we um, have some decapitated heads to see what the damage output could be. Obviously, losing Rabbit is not great here. I just want to see what a 5 Blast on on Brutal can do. Right, it's going to proc and 
kill me probably because I've no shields up. Okay, increase defense. Deepest defense weaken. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to run this team because Lydia's in my nightmare team, so. Um, no, I just, I just run him on negative affinity. He's actually quite good. He's quite good on negative affinity. Because his chance is quite high, it's not really too much of an issue. Might as well proc that right now. It doesn't do any damage. Full damage. Okay, let's just see how much he's done. It wasn't far off the Razzlevarg damage. It wasn't far off that damage. Your neutral rate have been long in for, on two accounts. One is better than the other one, but I'm getting into it more seriously. Oh, it's cool to hear, Easy. Welcome. I'm glad you're having fun. That's the important thing. Yeah, he died pretty early, but... I mean, he only... Well, not that early. He died at, like, five minutes. So he didn't die that early. Yeah, I'll buy the refills in a second. No, but thank you. It's the... The Torment head setup is the problem. Ruel's also difficult because he hexes, right? So a proportion of the damage is also going to go towards his hex. Um, but I mean, he's he's in a very rough raw gear at the moment. He's, got, he's not got 100%. Like, he's not maxed out crit rate. You know, I can't use him at, at the moment. But, uh, you know, it's a potential option as a team. His, his damage is quite good. I mean, this team is pretty solid, I think. Uh, I think the Shamael needs a build-up. Right, this dude needs a bit of a... Bit of work. He's built in some weird damage. He needs total rebuild, but... Um, we'll give him, like, something like this for now. Will that do it? That's perfect. Give that one for now. Um, I'm pretty sure. Ugo. You're the primary one. Zero and Hex. Thrala. And I'm pretty sure Islin is still okay. Yeah, Islin's fine. You could do with a better banner, but... He took a bit of a hammer in from builds, so he probably does need a bit of a, a rebuild. Let's just try it. Uh, what do you think the best gear for to farm in Doom Tower this rotation? I would suggest maybe Sorath or... Um, yeah, I would suggest Sorath, because uh, the Frost set is quite handy in the Cursed City Centranos. That's what I'm farming at the moment. Okay. But this is a problem right now with the mischief tank here. Um, I haven't got a good mischief tank control because Islin Hat needs the lightning cage to get enough buffs. Otherwise, the buff differential's not there. And it's like, can we fit Padraig into this team? I don't really know. I don't really know who he replaces. I'd have to drop, like, Islin for a Provoke set. But then, I need decreased speed. And Padraig's not going to do decreased speed. He's only going to do increased speed. That's that's the problem I have with a lot of these situations. Uh, I should be able to cleanse all these Provokes, which is great. i just whack you a bit. Now we can get the decrease speed. I've only got one decrease speed here, and that's what I don't really like about this team. It's not slowing the boss down enough, and him stealing the Terminator all the time is not great either. And we are susceptible to a bit of a nasty Wrath Blast at times. Okay, 
that Islin didn't provoke, which is a bit of a stressor. Hopefully we get a provoke this time. There we go. I've got to be careful because we will get whacked, but he's got decreased attack, so it should be relatively okay. Razzlevarg is now mostly scaled. Uh, I'm going to do this for now. Drop that. He's going to ally protect because we're about to get blasted by that head on the right. We're waiting for Val to scale up as well, so he's on a he's on a work plan. Drop the decrease speed out. Increase speeds. But you can see the damage is not that much higher when I was using Ruel, and that was a scuff team. Look how much the I'm gonna have to make that rabbit tankier. Even with even with increased defense, the enemy having decreased defense, he still took an absolute wallop in there. Um, we can pump some damage into this head. Here we weaken. Of course we didn't provoke, so there's going to be a cleanse coming out here now, probably. Unless I can kill this head. I can kill it, good. Okay. But in these situations here, I now no, no longer have the equal speed. Which is where something like Nekmothar could be better. Maybe it's just better than Islin and just run Nekmothar in like Provoke set. Because in this situation here right now, we're letting them take so many extra interval ticks because I don't have Nekmothar running. So maybe we just regain Nekmothar, put him into Provoke. So that we you know, can get more consistency. I just don't like provoke sets. I don't like the inconsistency of them. It stresses me out when provoke sets don't activate. <sighs> Is Nekmo good in four piece Slayer? Uh, yeah, if you can get four piece Slayer, four piece um, provoke that, or four piece hex, like prov provoke hex, something like that, it would be very good, yeah. We're losing all our damage here because we've got decreased attack as well. How do you deal with Ugo being bad affinity? Um, <laughs> prey is, I guess, the right word. See what I mean? I think this is the problem now. Like, he's not got enough resistance for Brutal. Even though he's like 400 resistance, it's not enough. So if I now try to block buffs, eventually I'll be able to do this. Uh, hey, Seth, do you know what the best damage options for Neri Burner in Sand Devil? Um, Ninja, then Cronum, then Supreme Gaelic, I think, maybe. Um... That's probably the tier list. Oh man, they've all got counter attack. I'll run into turn 31. We'll see how it is. This is about as bad as it could possibly get right now. Uh, let's be cleanse. I don't want to AoE right now. <sighs> Will we actually 
stop this. Well, he's slowly getting rid of the buffs, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> Look at him go. Yeah, Farrakhan, Blizzard, they're pretty good options. Right, we got back under control now. Two million from Val. We'll go to turn thirty one because that's where the last one ended, so we can see the damage comparison. Shouldn't have done that again because he hasn't got enough. Uh... Okay. Let's see how he compares. It's not bad, but I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel good to me. I'm on the fence about it. It just doesn't feel good to me. Uh, hey, Seth, two more questions if you don't mind. Uh, I'm uh, the Emic Nia Kaima team. Uh, who does the Nia reset? Um, Nia normally would reset the Trunda. Sh shy. Nia would reset the Trunda. You could also, as well, not run the Nia, run a Painkeeper. Painkeeper would be better because that could be reducing everyone. If you run Painkeeper, you can reduce the Emic. It's a bit better. And, like,. I've got a video coming out in a in a day or two, shy. So you can basically use that too as a reference point. It'll go into more detail than what I can explain. Uh, Vizix is not any better than Islin here. The issue is I've only got one decrease speed, and it's too inconsistent because I have to always provoke. Yeah, I just it doesn't feel like a, it's balanced right, Elixir. I can't put my finger on it. It feels like I'm always on the edge. It doesn't feel like I'm um, producing enough damage. Like, it requires too much setup. And, and this is maybe why I've not gone towards a Razzlevarg team. Because because I've got Nekmothar, I feel like Nekmothar solves more problems. And then I can fix the other problems with it. Whereas... Um, with Razzlevarg, you can, you kind of get yourself shoehorned into this problem of, well, you can't really run another increased speed with him. You can use double Emic. Double Emic is actually better than Emic Painkeeper. So. Uh, what's the target damage I want to get on Nightmare as much as I can get? Um. Well, that exact team, Jano. Or do you have a variant Razzlevarg team? No, I like Razzlevarg. It's just I feel like I can't fit him in, Lucifer, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm just struggling to fit him in. I just don't know. Like in an ideal world, what I want to do is I, I, I think I want to use Val, but I want to drop Val. 
I want to use my Whisper, but I know I can't really support the Whisper. And I want to use Pedrive, but I don't know who to swap for Pedrive. That's basically where my brain is at. That's where my brain is at. I want to basically use Pedragon, Whisper, and Val, but I can't figure out how I can fit all those in one team. Yeah, but so does Islin. Islin's ally protect is better than Vizix because Islin will heal when someone gets attacked. The difference is he just doesn't have enough resistance for this difficulty. He's got 342, um, but uh, for this difficulty, he's just I, I must have ruined his build, so... No, I would go full damage with him. Uh, Razzlevarg's built, I think, in um, full ignore defense. He's in built in savage. His weapon needs to be upgraded, so he's, he's still missing some gear. Uh, but Razzlevarg right now is at 286 speed, 6.2k. He's a bit squishy because he's not 4 star, uh, 3 star. 3 star would give him a chunk of defense, which would be really helpful. But I don't have that at the moment. Owl is just not created yet. Owl is just still in the forge. I mean, I got Curse set on Mithrala. You just can't run one Hex. That's the problem you've got to remember. You can't run one Hex. Because if your Hex champion gets eaten and you can't actually target the Mischief Head, what are you going to do? So, I'm just trying to figure... I just don't know how to balance the team, basically. Yeah. He's a bit squishy. Like, a lot of Razzlevog's strength and st survivability will come from better ascensions. Right now, he's just not ascended, right? Ascended gear is so important. Um, He's got things in the right place, but apart from the chest piece. When he's ascended, he'll be stronger. You DM me, did you? Let me have a look. Nice. Is that on Brutal? Aethel Red. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. Do I break my Nightmare team to make my Brutal team easier and then find something better for my Nightmare team? That is the problem. Yeah, keep in mind, though, my, my Rabbit is version 1 Rabbit, right? You gotta, you got to remember, Rabbit right now, his weapon's not fully upgraded, his helm's not fully upgraded, there's no Ascension on here. He's got masteries at least, but he's not like, he's not four star, which is kind of a bit of problem. Like four star is what you really want to get because that gives you the defense tankiness that you need and the crit damage. Four star is the, the goal for most champions that I have now because it makes him tanky. So, you know, what I could do is, is obviously take the archer out of my monster hunter team, bring that into my hard team. Which solves the Islin problem and gives me a better decrease speed and, and Hex. I can then look to drop Mithrala, bring in Pedraig maybe or someone else. And then that gives me a little bit more options here. There's just too... I think the problem is there's too many champions in this Brutal team that's doing one job. and Or doing multiple roles in one role. Um, and that's what the problem is, right? For example, there's only one decrease speed here, which is... Um, Islin. He's also the Provoker, so I have to sacrifice sometimes decrease speed for the Provoke. Uh, Val's the only decrease attack and weaken I've got. I'm having to bring Shamael just to solve the Torment Head. I'm having to bring Ugo just because I need to solve the Block Buffs problem. And Mithrala then is the last resort because I need Survivability Cleanse. And that, that's, that's the problem I have, I think, with this team is it's too much of very individual people. Yeah, it's almost like I need like that Nekmothar or that Archer to kind of like cover off a few rolls to give me some space. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure like my plan is to do that eventually. Um, it's not. I mean, it's fine because Ugo is is in hex here. It's not that I I don't want to drop the Mithrala. Like, 
It's just that if you take the Mithrala away, it's the shield, strengthen, cleanse, increase defense. That's what you lose. And that's a big thing to replace. She's a bit like Lydia. Very, very hard to replace unless you bring the power picks out. Um, which is, you know... And maybe I should just build more around Ruel as a second damage dealer Hex instead of Val because he is six star, right? So therefore he gets that innate defensiveness that I don't have and he will do a lot of damage with this ability. I'm pretty sure this ability would be up there a little bit with Val. It it will it will be close because the thing about Ruel as well, you got to remember, his passive is what makes Ruel super strong. Every enemy takes 10% more damage under Hex. Every enemy is slower by 5% under Hex. You know, that's the big thing about his passive. He's also giving increased accuracy to all allies. He's veiling himself, so it's a torment solution a little bit. So he, it's this passive that makes Ruel really interesting for me. But then if you, yeah, I mean, if you bring... Get rid of Shamail and bring Pedraig, then you've got a Torment Head problem, right? How do you kill the Torment Head quickly? So. Yeah, I don't have Cardiel. This is a problem. You know, I could build some... Like, this is obviously my new hard team here. This is, this is locked in now. Let me do a comma, is it? Uh, so I absolutely could lead a team with uh, Nekmothar. I feel like Nekmothar like, still needs to be in one of these teams. I, don't, I think that's a bit of a problem I'm having. Like I'm almost like getting rid of Nekmothar. For what reason? I just saw Nekmo, is he there? Yeah, it's not fast because I got Shujan. Venus is in the normal hard team. Like the, I feel like if you bring Pedra, you got to be careful you don't over-index into support. Is he down here somewhere, isn't he? So that would give us, like, ally attack, full cleanse, double increased speed, double speed boost. Uh, we get leech, we get decreased attack. So that covers quite a lot. Then we would just need to bring, like, a decreased attack, a uh, decreased defense. Um, this would cover our hex. But this team now can't run rabbit. This team is a different composition now. This, this team is just going to run differently. We would need a decreased defense here. Someone with good decreased defense damage. And that's a bit of a problem. Like, who do you run, like? Uh, in this team here, I was running Ugo. I could drop an Ugo in here, but that would then max out my supports. If I was to drop an Ugo in this team right now, it would absolutely max out the support that I have available. I wouldn't be able to support anything else. Um, but this does give us the increase speed, decrease speed, double boost, ally attack solution. It's because Rabbit doesn't do decreased speed is a big problem as well. Yeah, Shu Zhen basically um, grants me an extra turn. So I can run slower because Shu Zhen is going to grant an extra turn, an instant turn. So I can basically make my Trunder take a turn. Uh, why don't I ever use Salad? Because I find he's problematic because he outruns his speed buff. The issue with these teams is not speed buff. The issue is decreased speed more than anything else. Like, I've already got two speed buff champions here, right? I can't run another one. He's fine. He's fine. There's no value in me running ne in, in running Rabbit. One of these two would have to drop if I run Rabbit. And that's more likely to be the Padraig because this is giving me decreased speed. And I, I just feel like, for me, 
Necmothar is the non-damage Razzlevog. And I find my damage elsewhere. I, that's how I'm feeling a little bit with it. Uh, Gerb Tuck is really good in the height, the Thunder team. Um, Razzlevog, Newt, Shamiel, Mithrala, Ugo Vizic. Pretty good. Yeah, like, I can never keep increased attack on Martial Ed. He outruns the buffs. That's why I don't like Martial Ed. Yeah, so I could run Necmo and Provoke. Because, obviously, we've got an ally attack. Which means the Provoke set's much more consistent. This this feels like a very good base, right? We get Hex. We get one damage dealer. We get ally attack. We get some supportive buffs. We get double increased speed. We get decreased speed. We get decreased attack. Great. So we need to cover things off like a second damage dealer. We need to cover things off like the torment head and we need block buffs. Now, I don't technically need block buffs in the sense that we've got two Messiah, but the reflect buffs can also be awkward. So if you're not running a block buffs, so you need to have some sort of buff removal or something like that. Now, I could run Wukong as a damage dealer. I do. I don't know. Like, how? what about like, I don't find he's necessarily a great damage dealer for this. Right, his A2 doesn't get as much damage. I feel like that's a bit of a problem. But he's obviously a block buffs damage option if I want to go that direction. We also need a decreased defense that's AoE in this team here. So we'd need to like look at our list of options and go... You know, who do we have that's um, decreased defense? It's really annoying I can't do target in here, but you know, let's see what we can do. Because obviously Ruel is a single target, not an AoE. Not going to do it. Um, she's uh, Tumasia is only single target. We could run a Suzerain Katone, but it's very, very unreliable. I could run a Belenor. It's not the greatest damage dealer in the world. Um, if I'm being honest. Lydia's locked in Nightmare at the moment. Very difficult to replace her with the team that she's in. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. So this is the problem. Like, who do we run as our decreased defense? Hmm. I have a lot of single target defenses here, but not really. Like, you know, I, I could run a second Venus. I don't really want to, but I could. Um, Marinix, yeah, that would be a second Hex. Hex works nicely as well with the Ruel. We could run a Marinix. You know, and we do have a, a master, a partially mastered, you know, Marinix could work. I don't like Sissia because of affinity more than anything else. Um, she's so dependent on making sure she lands the burns. If you don't land the burns, you don't get the extra turn. I, I don't like her because of that affinity issue. I really would want someone consistent. You know, Marinix is consistent. The only thing is if you take Marinix, where are you going to get your weaken from? Then you enter that realm of problems of, okay, now I need a weaken. Uh, which I could bring Val, right? I could still return back and bring Val. But then you're running the problem of how squishy do you want to make this team, right? So like if we've already locked in this, if we then lock in, say, Marinix... And then we lock in the Val. Where is he? Like, you are running very, very squishy. Like, how do you make this team survive? Yes, we have decreased attack. Yes, we have Hex, decreased defense. And we have Weaken. We have a Hex from Ruel and more damage. And we have some supportive, but we don't have any shields. Like, this team is just dead. Like, you know, this team needs something to keep it alive. So it needs shielding. I mean, a Brogni could work, I guess. You know, you'd probably want a, a defense buffer in that team somewhere. Yeah, you could put Mithrala, I suppose. You could put an Elva. I don't know how, sub like, I don't know how stable Elva would be. The only thing I'm worried about Elva is a passive continuous heals. Like, how much does she cause, like, how many problems does she cause with a passive? Is the only thing I'm not sure about Elva. Otherwise, that would give me, you know, 
a cleanse at least. Alatrain's in Nightmare Team, so can't use him. Mithrala could come back in. I don't have Archbishop, unfortunately. Uh, well, Padraig's not really that much of a support. Like, he's got healing and he's got cleansing, but he's not really a support, you know? Um, well, not if I run Necmo Thought and Provoke, right? I could run Necmo and Provoke, which would be fine. So that's not a problem. It's just like, you need something to keep the team alive. Otherwise, this team is just going to die. And I would like it to be... I mean, I could just drop a Duchess in. It's always an option as well, right? Could just go, hey, you know what? We need the team to stay alive. Why don't we just put in a Duchess? Doesn't have block buffs, though. So if we get poison clouded, we're done for. Which means maybe we just go drop you and bring... you. No. Wukong won't out-damage Ruel. And you need two hexes. There is no block buffs, so... I mean, the, the thing is, with Duchess is probably okay because we have ally attack, so we can probably kill the Torment Head very quickly. Yeah, you don't normally need more than two DPSs. Especially, like, two heavy-hitting DPSs. Provoke would be Nekmothar, basically. Yeah, Ugo's in Curse Gear here, right? So, like, if I was to run that here... Like, obviously, um, my Padrai has no life right now. Because he's, uh, yeah, he's learning how to be a champion. Um, we can just give him survivability. Okay, um, <laughs> we'll take that. Lol. Well, no, because the, the goal of this would be to kill the Torment Head very, very, very quickly. Right? That would be what you would aim to do, is use the ally attackers to just kill that head super quick. So, the idea is hopefully you would kill it within, um... within the window, you know? Giving him something to stay alive so he's not instantly dead. Um, 
It really sucks I have no protection rings. It really does. Like, it super sucks I have no protection rings. Look, no. Just give him some attack. Alright. Let's just try it. He's squishy, but it's fine. He'll die, but it's fine. Okay, so... Yeah, I bought the 3v3s. Don't worry. I bought them. So, obviously, um, Neck with Arts could get feared. Nothing I can really do about that. But... Hex. Decrease the turret's weak turn. And then the idea is you basically kill this as fast as you can. See what I mean? How we can quickly kill it. Obviously, we have no provoke sets, so that's this is why this that got cleansed. We have no provoke sets right now, which is fine. It's to be expected. Okay, uh, we have no cleanse. Set it back up now. That Pedraig is at the point of death. There we go, but it's fine. We've got to revive it right now. Okay, well. It's very difficult to test this when the champion's not built and you have no provoke sets, but you can test the basic concepts. But, I mean, this is the problem. I haven't got control of the Mischief Head either. Like, who do I make a Mischief Tank in this kind of team? The only way you can do it is to have decreased accuracy. Oh, I shouldn't have feared that. It's just done. Because if you have decreased accuracy, then the Blessings will hopefully overwhelm the, the Mischief Head. But you can see at the moment, every single one is going on the Ruel. So if we're, we were to basically target, um, we'd have to have decreased accuracy on that Mischief Head. Because there's no way I can build Ruel with enough resistance. But he's always going to be the target because he's got um, a buff difference. Can we just get rid of this torment head? Well, that's something at least. Okay, we can get people back alive. Can we, like, just get a little bit of control? We got an extra turn. Uh, what caused the head to get stunned? If you deplete their life barrier. The dragon's gonna get killed again. <laughs> He's doomed. There he goes. And then they've got a problem because Reflect is in the way. Do you know what? Let me just test this by bringing the obvious solution here. Um... Machine. 
No, it's just no provoke on it. Um, the team's fine. You just don't have a provoke. That's all. So um, I, I didn't have a provoke. But taking out Ugo means now I don't have a decrease attack. But hey. Such is the world we live in. Ah, why did I do that? I just feared myself. Look how much Archer just makes this so much more stable. Isn't it disgusting how strong this champion is? that extra turn god he needs books so badly doesn't he now normally nekmathar with arch is not a good combo because um what you really don't want is for there to be decreased speed up because you don't get the 10 meter boost. Oh, man. Oh, we got rid of the fear head at least. To get a bit of control. Like so everything comes up rosy and dandy. Walking down a crowded street, moving to a different beat. All eyes are on us now. Oh, but we don't care, do we? Oh, I can't imagine a world. I would really like to get rid of that mischief head. It's not going to happen, unfortunately. Damn. It's trying to reset that mischief head. Look how much easier this is with the archer, by the way. Like, this is, this is the difference of what I was saying without the other teams. Because you have one champion that can cover multiple things, everything just feels so much easier and more like like sustainable. So much more sustainable. Just need to get his RD bus back. So Hex out. Man, he's already back. It's frustrating. Decrease defense speed. Normal cleanses. Nice. Hex out. So we'll be able to see a little bit of damage potential from Ruel now because we actually have everything set up how we need. So if we watch the head on the right, this is the kind of damage we can get out of Ruel. 459, 762. So it's a lot of damage. And then obviously once we get... The key is getting decapitation on. Once the heads are decapitated and we can start cycling a bit, we actually have a chance of doing a lot of damage.
What's the clans? Seven hundred twenty k one. This will hit two million damage on Val. Robot. That was a mistake. I'll run it to turn 25 again and we'll see what the... Uh, what we got? Provoke. It's not bad. Right, let's just try and take out this torment ahead as quickly as we can. There's a poison cloud coming, which I really don't want to have to deal with. I have no block buffs. This would be the only downside. No block buffs means no options to get rid of the poison cloud head very easily. And watch as this head gets really close to dying. Or oh, the consumption is going to save me a little bit. So if I can find a solution for block buffs, then this team could be decent. But like now I'm in real spot of bother. Like I can get rid of this head at least. It's no more fear. But I have no, like, way to do damage right now because... Basically, gotta wait two turns, which is not ideal. But hey, we can hopefully, like, attack. But this is why I quite like Val. It's a lot of damage if Val gets going. So, yeah. Like, this is the problem. It's fine if I bring Archer. But that team could work. That feels a bit better. Once you have things like Padraig built properly. Like, he's not built correctly. He's not surviving. He's not actually getting his ally attacks. He's not booked. But it's like, okay... I, I, I basically had to take out the block buffs just to fit the provoke in. So maybe if I put Nekmothar into provoke, drop the archer, get Ugo, that's the best team. No, no, I know. I just put archer in because I needed a solution. I was just testing. I was just testing. I think actually if, you, if we had Nekmothar in provoke, then Ugo with Nekmothar in Provoke with Ruel, Pedrai, Val, and Duchess was actually pretty good. We were killing the head, Torment head, pretty fast. We would need to figure out how we're going to manage the Head of Mischief. Maybe we need to run some sort of, like, interference with the Head of Mischief. Um, because obviously we don't have decreased defense in this team either, other than Ruel. So Ruel is very heavily dependent without a go. Um... The other option is free, like, decrease accuracy. Uh, well, Nekmothar will have Leech. That's not really a problem. Like, Nekmothar will have Leech. That's not really a, too much of a problem. Maybe Panda's a good option here, actually. We get increased accuracy, increased attack. We also get decreased accuracy. We also get decreased speed on all enemies. And we get shielding and healing. So maybe... 
Instead of running Duchess, we run the Panda. Where is he? He's down here somewhere. Bambus. And then we bring Ugo back into the mix. Right? I don't need healing. I just need survival. Like, he will give a shield to everyone, which is good. Shield is effective. We also decrease the duration of all enemy buffs. So if there is a reflect or anything that pops up, we'll decrease them. Um, which is really handy. The decrease speed is on an A1. So if we kill ahead, we get a decrease speed. Works with the ally attack. We have a bit of a fear solution here as well. It does make Torment a lot more dangerous. But what he does do is... The reason why I wanted was looking at it is... If we have decreased accuracy on the Head of Mischief... That basically puts the Head of Mischief's... Um, health... Like that will put the Head of Mischief's... Um, just checking now. So I was checking something. Uh, let's see. Uh, that will put the Hydra mischief requirements at. 450 to resist normally but if we take his accuracy down which we would do and we basically knock it down to 0 0.5 then he would become 172.5 so 172.5 plus 125 which is what you need on top it's only 297 resistance 297 resistance is much easier to achieve as a number considering he's already at 269 resistance so in essence if I just basically get a decreased accuracy on that Head of Mischief, because I'm getting the 5-star Blessing, I can probably build Ruel as the Mischief Tank without actually having to build him as the Mischief Tank. Because he'll always be under Veil and no one else will be. So he'll always have more buffs. Because he's not going to have more buffs than anyone else. Because it's all going to go on in Feeble, uh, on the Veil. He doesn't Veil anyone. So, I could do that. It is not brilliant for a Torment solution. But I think it would solve a lot of problems. Um, I would do... I'm, I might do the Sand Devil event anyway for Oil. But I think this Prism is a bit risky because there's a lot of Legendaries. Steadfast Marshal. Yeah, but I don't want to take the Archer out of my Nightmare team. So, I mean, Panda could be an interesting option. I've bought it, don't worry. I've bought them already, don't worry, Green Virus. What is he? He's like a uh, Bob Banlord, right? Doesn't have to be a perfect fail, Renesh. I'm pretty sure it has to be a perfect fail. I don't think normal veil works. Yeah, it has to be perfect veil. It doesn't work. When attacked by enemies not under perfect veil. So, um, Steadfast Marshal doesn't work. Unfortunately. They actually buffed it to do that. It used to be veil. They buffed it to be perfect veil. I don't know. I need to think more of it. To be honest, I'm just going to run my Nightmare team now.
I think we're confident we're going to win, so I can I can tank my brutal key a little bit. So, um, so yeah. Dennis, thank you so much for becoming a member for 10 months. Two months to go before you're purple. Absolutely. Two months to go. Two months to go. Um, right, this is frustrating. So the worst part about this team is setup because of the torment head. The worst part about this team is setup. Um, so we're just gonna have to. This might take us a few minutes to get going. What I need to do is get decreased defense and burn on this torment head. Like so. I need to make sure though is um, I need you last and you first and then that 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 yes I need to make sure that the ally attacks actually in the right order I actually want like the decreased defense to go on as soon as possible there you go that's a perfect setup, so that's good. Only downside is now, um, you know, this is RNG. Nice, we did get it, so we're, we're good to go. Uh, all we can do now is just try and run through the fears. Oh. Okay, that was good. Send the buffs. Decrease speeds. Right, now we're good to go. Now I just need to kill this Torment Head. So my goal for this team is straight away, kill the Torment Head. As quickly as I can, kill the Torment Head. Because he's the main risk to my team. Once he's dead, we are, we're sitting pretty, basically. So I will absolutely keep attacking. Technically, I shouldn't do that. I should keep my cleanse free. Um, it doesn't help that um, a certain Michinaki is weak affinity to, you know, the head of mischief, which is not great. As you can see there, I just lost three abilities in a row, and Lydia is, like, really bad <laughs> in sort of mischief head. I could get one shot here. I might have to start again because I didn't get block buffs out on this head. Oh, I'm, I survived so far. No. I, I didn't get block buffs on the head on the right. This team is, is, is all about setup. The first, like, five minutes is awful. Once I get past the first five minutes, it's normally okay. Didn't get burn. So. There's plenty of torment options in this team, though. That's the thing. Um, Mikage A2 is a torment option. I've got a torment option in... Um, what's his face over here? Uh, Alatrian. It's just, unfortunately, it takes a bit of setup. Once I get the setup right, we're good to go. You know? Nearly there. She's really, really good. Even to this day, I still use her. Not as much as I used to. So on decreased defense, burn. We didn't get any of it. So I hate the setup for this team. Especially when affinity matchups are a bit awkward with Michinaki. It's... Uh, one of those things. Oh, come on. Fine. Well, we'll just go without. Yeah, there are solutions. You'll, you'll find in a minute when I get started um, that it, I don't really have a problem with Torment Head. I kill it quite quickly. It's just, this team is just terrible for setup when Torment is right at the start of the rotation. And if you look, like, Michinaki, 
is um, weak affinity to the torment head and the wrath head. So when it's torment wrath together, it's a lot bad. It, it's just awful for this team um, because of Michinaki. Right, there we go. We got the setup. Get the provoke. Uh, now we just want to basically hit that. Oh, she 3 percent the block buffs. Are you serious? <sighs> she 3 percent the block buffs. Okay, now we're good to go. Okay. Fears. I hate the torment head, honestly. Shouldn't have attacked that head. That was a mistake. <sighs> the setup is so frustrating with this team. Always weak hit. We speed. Of course, that resisted. Okay, we'll get rid of Duke's attack at least. Shield. Sorry, I need to focus on this setup because I just need to get past this first hurdle. Oh man, Michinaki is not burning anything. Oh. Apart from the one head I don't want to kill right now. Okay. Let's reset the two, two meters of the boss. Okay, well, we drop Termi to something. And then we're going to hit that. And then we're going to decrease speed. We're kind of in a spot of bother. We just have to be careful right now. Right, nice. There's no uptime on that head because of the way the setup works. Okay, good. We're getting there. We're nearly under control now. Now we just got to kill the head of torment, and then we are looking pretty. Oh, 
Come on, kill the head. There we go. Right, okay. Block buffs that. <sighs> Get a provoke out. I actually made a mistake there. So I've got to be very careful I don't lose burn on that left head right now because there's poison cloud on it. Okay, we can start we can start ramping damage up now. Because we actually have the setup we need. We're not gonna get slowed down by the torment head. Slowed all down. AoE damage. Burn, extend, boom, A1. A1. Look how much damage now the torment is gone, how much easier this is. Okay, so now we need to kill another head because we want always to be killing heads. Ideally, I don't want to kill that head over there, actually. I want to kill this head over here. Let's just get rid of any debuffs we have on us. Uh, I don't want to get reflect buffs, so I'll put a reflect buff. Uh, I'll put that out there. Kill two heads. It was a bit disappointing we killed that head on full turn meter. 1.8. We did have a star align moment then from Rathalos. And shame there was no decreased defense out to cover it, but we'll take it. Decreased defense weaken. So now we want to start hitting the heads. We get decreased speed, turn me a boost. Uh, we probably want to hit this. You see how the damage is ramping now that we've been able to get rid of all those problems. No, Rathalos is one of the best Hydra champions in the game. You just have to set him up right. Wait till you see how much damage he will do at the end of this run. It's all about the setup with him. Now, I'm deliberately not using my block buffs at the moment because I want to keep pumping this head. It's not great because we don't actually have... Um, uh, we don't actually have, like, um, a strong affinity. So he's weak hitting a lot, but it's better than having no head whatsoever. I shouldn't have used that ability there. That was a bit of a mistake. Now I will cleanse because I've got too many debuffs on me. See, it's weak hitting a lot. But this is what you're meant to do with Michinaki. Kill a head. And then keep whacking the head when it's dead. 2.4 million Rathalos A1 there. I've not been able to test this team properly. Because we've been having to tank. And the last rotation was really bad. So I'm really excited to see how well this team can do. But look how much the damage is scaled. See you later, Dimitri. Yeah, I'll show you the full builds. Don't worry. So first goal now, we got to get rid of um, this. And it's the worst setup because, of course, the Torment Head is back. So all of our fun is gone. Um, we got to try and get that. But at least we don't have to worry about provokes or cleanses. Not that we have to with, you know, with the Archer anyway. So now I'm actually going to focus on killing this Mischief Head first. Because of the... 75% uh, decapitation bonus. There's no point in me trying to kill that head yet. But again, the Torment Head comes out. The first thing I absolutely have to do is kill the Torment Head. As soon as I can, I want to kill the Torment Head. Because this is what's going to happen otherwise. Um, I don't mind using that for damage at the moment. Because I'll have an ability to cleanse. And I do have two, two champions I can cleanse. So if I, as long as I'm smart... And I make sure I keep either Mikage's A2 or like this situation here now. I can get rid of all the fears. That's why she is a solution to the Torment Head. The biggest problem when you first start is trying to get rid of, like get yourself in a nice rhythm. But now I'm in a rhythm here. I don't have to commit all of my attacks to kill it quickly. I can basically take my time and make sure I've got options to cleanse. Ideally, I want to like... I want to kill this head here. 
because I want to reset the turn meter. That I wasn't quick enough. Uh, so we'll now attack this with all allies. A1. Take the block buffs here. So now I want to cleanse, right? I want Alatrine to have a cleanse. I can get rid of the fears. Problem solved. I can work around the issue, basically. But as long as I'm balancing Mikage's A2 and Alatrian's A2, like now, I can get rid of those fears. Problem solved. Keep in mind as well, every time Mikage takes a turn, your champion with the highest attack gets a full cleanse. So Rathalos, every single time he takes a turn, is getting cleansed. So you can see the damage is really good now. And we've almost killed this Torment Head. So I will probably start focus firing after I've, after this Decapitation Head comes up. I'll focus fire and kill that Torment Head. Now we've got to be careful because we've had a Provoke. And I don't know if I'm going to get back around to it in time. So now I want to kill this Torment Head. So I can make sure I don't have any sort of fear. The only downside is I think this provoke head is gonna is gonna cleanse, and there's nothing I can really do about it because of just the way it's been set up. It's defense. Yeah, it's fine. That was just bad timing, but it's alright. We can get it back into control. whipping this head we got poison cloud out which is not the best but we can work around it the important thing is we got the provoke on for two turns before that poison cloud went on so um, there's not really much point me using my decrease speed right now because of the poison cloud and also this head is about to respawn anyway so i might as well wait until i'll do that though because i want strengthen out okay we've got a wrath head let's get rid of these debuffs Kill off this suffering heads. Nice. Extend all my buffs. Get a provoke out. And we're good to go again. Uh, I'm going to save that. I'm just going to A3. It's kind of a waste, but... We need to get debuffs back out there before we can actually start ramping damage. Eventually, M uh, Michinaki will remember he's meant to be able to uh, burn. It's very difficult for him, apparently. Look at him. Just cannot burn for the life of him. Hey, he's remembered to burn. Keeps defense. Right, now we can do some damage. Uh, boom. That's fine. Don't weak. Nice. 1.2 million. Uh, let's just pump this head over here. Get Michinaki back out as soon as possible. I really hate that when you get consumed, you lose all your buffs. Gotta reapply them again. Because this team kind of stacks up buffs real fast. Boom. Uh, it kind of took a bit of a nasty thing. Kind of need to cleanse out here pretty quickly. 
Q. Duke's attack. So yeah, so we're in a good, nice, nice, comfortable build now, right? So the key thing when you're doing these sorts of runs as well is you don't really want to kill all the heads at the same time. You kind of do for damage, but you don't want to for your momentum. Otherwise, you will end up in a situation where you um, get all the heads back all at the wrong time and you can't control it. Uh, apparently, I didn't have Provoke available or something happened, so we now need to pivot and kill this, this head that will Provoke if we're not careful. Okay, so this is like the bad situation I was just mentioning. I'm about to kill all these heads at really the most awkward time. But there isn't much I can truly do about it at this point. So we might as well rock with it. Um, now, I don't know. I've lost track. Oh, we don't. We don't. We don't. It was a lot, but not, not the fifth hit one. You never know with the fifth hit. This is like disastrous, by the way. This is really what I never want to happen. All the heads are going to spawn all at the same time. It's absolutely disastrous. Really don't like this. Okay, so we got two. That's not so bad. Uh, we can stop you. Uh, we can extend buffs. I shouldn't have done that. I've made a mistake. If I get a provoke head, I'm in trouble. Get a hex out on everyone. Okay, so this is what I mean by the worst situation possible. The only good thing is the wrath head was a little bit staggered. So, um, we were essentially able to stagger it a little bit. So if this is a provoke head, we're okay. So that's, that's a good thing because what you don't want to have is provoke come out and then, you know, everything goes wrong. So I'm going to hold my decrease speed for the time being. And just keep hitting this head on the right. I'm going to hold those buffs as well. I'm waiting for the poison cloud to fall off. I don't mind doing an ally attack on this head over here. We'll get some damage out. Keep whacking the heads. Uh, keep A1-ing. It's weak affinity, which isn't great. 1.2 mil. holding course provoke head comes out now we do our debuffs now we do everything extend some buffs uh we're gonna hold that a second i'm actually gonna try and get a burn out oh, it was annoying uh i gotta be careful because i can't do too much damage until I get rid of these buffs. So I really need to buff strip here. Now we're good. Cleanse away. Oh, who's going to get consumed? Oh, it's only Makage. That's fine. I thought I had my Provoker consumed. Um, let's ally attack this head so we can get decreased defense. Okay, it's fine. Okay, consumed. Should be fine. Again, Torment Head is the problem with this team. 
So my goal right now, kill the Torment Head. Everything I can is going to go into that Torment Head. But I have to also be mindful of the Provoke. Um, that I don't basically waste abilities, you know? So like right now, I'm good because I can provoke next turn, uh, which is good, you know? The deepest defense weaken out. Of course we feared. Ah, I should have A2 there, that would have been huge damage. Never mind. Right, we're going to be A1 in that Torment Head. Oh, God. Uh, can I... Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and do some bash damage. I'm going to have to cleanse before I do this. Do three speeds. Nearly killed the Torment Head. Kill the Torment Head. Kill the Torment Head. Seriously. I hate it when it gets to like 10 health. Oh, come on. There we go. No more fears. Good. Deep defense. Weaken. Hex. Extend. Beautiful. Get rid of all these. Extend our buffs. Duke's defense weaken. Nice. So now what I want to do is get some burns going on. Uh, look at that. Or we cannot get some burns. No, we can't do burn. Okay, apparently burning is not within our uh, not within our wheelhouse today from um, Michinaki. Oh well. That was the 200% boost. See, if we got a burn, that was even harder. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Still 3.3 million. It's doing well so far. We're about to hit 100 turns. And we're at, like, probably, if we keep this pace up, but 150 mil, if everything goes to plan. It's a shame. Oh, it's another Torment Head. Of course it is. That's going to slow our damage down. Why didn't I ever provoke? I must have 3%ed or something. Uh, it's mission. Kill the torment head again. I'd like to kill this head first. Yeah, I know. Must have, must have resisted. It's fine. It can happen. You know, even if someone as good as Archer can still have a, a moment in time where it doesn't uh, quite work. Really? Why are you protecting him? I got to be careful now with Rathalus' A2. I can't use it until I get rid of these reflect buffs. So I got to be very careful. One more turn on that reflect buff. Him out straight away. Okay, now we're good. break of Rasha. She's not really need it, to be honest. It's very rare. She's missed one provoke out of a hundred boss turns, you know? That's pretty it's a pretty fair game. She's done a good job. Wow, she actually resisted that. That's her first. She normally resist. Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of this. 
Now, ideally, I want to reset the turn meter of the, the enemies, but I don't know if I can kill this mischief head quick enough before these heads take a turn. Um, because I don't have decreased speed on them. I don't have an attack unless I have it next turn. Oh, that was a big hit. Okay, I managed to reset it that time. Cleanse. Right, now I want to get rid of that Torment Head, ideally. Fed up of fighting it. Good. Okay. Uh, right, let's start getting some burns out. Um, oh. Make sure he's got block buffs so we don't have a problem there. Stand. Uh, I don't really want to provoke right now. That's a bit of a bad idea. Because one of them is always going to be the provoke head. Alright, so now we need to basically get some control. Smack. Provoke. Nice. It's a poison cloud out, but it's alright. We've the, the key thing is we got um the burn on the head of the provoke head that we needed on. Now we just need to get some control and try and get us doing some damage to said head. What's my Alatrian? They're all about 300-ish speed. Ow. That's not great. This is not the best um, rotation for Michinaki, which is a shame, because a lot of the heads that keep popping up are just like half of them a weak affinity. It's not, not ideal, but hey. You know. We work with what we have. Just keep whacking this head. You know, we may have even had too many debuffs on the uh, the provoke head when I last tried to, when it, when we resisted potentially. All right, if we had like brimstone and stuff and everything, maybe we just over debuffed it. Thank uh, you. I'll have my Lydia back. Oh, he just resisted it. Okay. Okay, no more provokes, which is great. Can you just stop stealing my buffs for five minutes? Keeps defense weakened. Uh, let's start getting burns. Michinaki, can you burn? Michinaki, can you burn? Thank you. Let's get rid of those buffs. Gonna provoke hex, boom, boom, boom. No, stop stealing my buffs on the wrong people. <sighs> right, I really want to kill that head of mischief right now. really want to kill this head of mischief before that head on the right takes a turn. Right, reset. Nice. Uh, 
let's get this. Keeps defense, weaken, lovely. Oh, there was a big hit there. That was the stars aligned moment. That was a huge hit. This team is really pumping some numbers right now. Oh, we got a refresh. Nice. 1.7 million. Oh, this Torment Head. Can this Torment Head leave me alone? I feel like all we've had all like, there's just perma Torment Heads. Just can it go away? Does it not know who I am? Like, come on. Leave me be. Let me have some fun with my team that I don't have to deal with fears all the time. Turn. Uh, let's ally attack. I oh, didn't get deep defense. That's a shame. It is, isn't it? It's like I'm like my purgatory punishment for building the Trunder team. Just like a billion torment heads thrown at me constantly. Uh, have I got f have I got fear on her? This, so look how many buffs there are, right? So I've actually got Heaven Cast on Rathalos because of this reason. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven buffs on him. Really is high value. It's so many buffs on the team. I can't see what who's got what. Oh, we've got to be careful. Ne um, Arch has got Mark of the Hydra in a moment. So that's a bit of a problem. Uh, we should probably save that. I just don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully... Hopefully, we don't get the provoke head pop out right now because that would be disastrous to somewhat. I really don't want to have to fight that head. Get rid of the reflect. Oh, that was a big hit as well. We had another stars align moment. Oh, that's a bit annoying. <laughs> okay, good. No provoke. That's ideal. We have no provoke head, so we can uh, kill to our heart's content. I can kill the mischief head before the blight takes a turn. That'd be great, but it's not going to happen, is it? Because that would be too easy. Ah, I was hoping it was the five hundred percent one. Okay, well, that was annoying. Oh, we can get Archer back at least. Ah, oh, okay. Um, I guess we're just gonna have to hit this this head here for a bit until we can uh, get rid of poison cloud. I mean, the good thing is hex damage will ignore poison cloud, right? But at the moment, it's just because we we lost our mischief tank, who is the archer. Archer's mischief tank in this team because she got consumed. The mischief head's having a bit of fun at the moment. So we're going to have a little bit of a slowdown in damage for a period of like, you know, two minutes. I shouldn't have done that. It was a mistake. Okay. Get rid of the Torment Head now, I think. head down mm. no bit okay it's fine 
burns out there, lovely. Can we please? Thank you. Kill the Tormin Head. Lovely. Okay, life barrier goes, pain link, and all that kind of nonsense. And let's get some damage. Oh, Rathalos is going to get eaten soon. That's a shame. Uh, Deuce defense. Uh, boost. Oh, 3.9 million. See, people who basically say that Rathalos is not very good for Hydra. Tell me another champion that can do 3.9 million in Nightmare on a decapitated head other than Trunda. In one hit. Probably Turvald as well. But you know what I mean. Like, even Whisper can't do that damage in, like, lower difficulties. And yet people are like, ah, he's not that good, you know. He's not as good as everyone says he is. And all these different factors. I'm like, he is. He's, uh, he's got it going for him, you know? I don't even think Taras can, because Taras loses out from AoE penalties. Uh, boom. Oh, I had no downtime on that there. Revoke. Yeah, but the Taras A2 can't do 3 million, can it? I'm pretty sure the Taras A2 cannot do 3.9 million damage in a single hit. I'd be fairly confident in saying that. It would do good damage, don't get me wrong. And it's not going to do, like... You know, that level of damage. Can we get, like, this this head burnt? No? Okay, fine. Okay, nice. Uh, sure, let's, let's whack this head a bit more. Got to be careful about the, the Wrath head. So I'm actually going to try and kill the Poison Cloud head so I can get rid of Poison Cloud. So if you don't know, if you kill the Poison Cloud head, it will remove all Poison Clouds. So quite nifty, quite important to do. Especially in that situation there, because I actually don't have decreased attack or block buffs on the head of Wrath. So, there's a, currently there's a fail rate on the Wrath head, where if I don't get, like, some control over it, I will die. So, right now, I'm kind of scared. I'll be honest, now I'm not so much scared, because I've got block buffs at least. And I need to not do any more damage to this mischief head before I have, like, some some survivability on the team. I need to get rid of the decrease attack. Hence why I'm not attacking it. I'm not AoEing because now I can do this. I, I, I weak hit! Gah! hate affinity oh well it's a good run i'm gonna leave it there block buffs is not needed i just got super unlucky with the way that that rotation set up and i got provoked out i got super unlucky because what happened was i got double provoked on the control elements and then I didn't I should have probably waited for decrease attack or something just one of those things how does that solve the problem no no this is time it's fine 
That this this is just one of those things that can happen. Now I'm not too worried because 237 million is is good enough for what we need this week. But it's good to know that this team can go 300 million comfortably. You know, this team can go 300 million. It can do it. I was just super unlucky. No, we're not tanking Hydra. We're pushing. Yeah, it's Nightmare. Look at Rathalos Blademaster. Absolutely decimating the competition. Absolutely decimating it. 82 million. 82 million damage on the Rathalos. Comfortable. I could have probably kept going if I didn't have that one bad moment and pumped out some more damage, you know? Um, the problem with... Um, what you got to remember about Padraig is as much as he gives you ally protection and continuous heals, he doesn't give you increased defense, shield, and block debuffs, right? Blade Master is giving me quite a lot in this team. It's not a one-to-one -one swap. Yes, you get more offense in terms of ally attack, but you lose quite a lot. I don't need the increased speed because I've got um, Lydia. So that's not really a problem, right? I've got double buff extension with Lydia. Yeah, very free-to-play team, right? Anyone can get this team. <laughs> what do you mean my clan has no chance this week? We're leading by miles. We've got like a 15 million lead. Unless someone all of a sudden drops like four Trunder teams, we're going to win this week. Um, the way you build it, David, is you normally build flat stat HPs and percentage attack. So where you can get flat stat HP on Rotus, you build that, then you get percentage attack where you can get percentage attack. So like, for example, you would get um, flat HP ring, flat HP banner, crit damage amulet, attack percentage boots, attack percentage chest, crit damage gloves, and then you would ascend the top row, all HP. You would ascend the middle row, attack, attack, crit damage, and then you would ascend the rings, HP, crit damage, HP. So it's not bad. Um, it should be good. Yeah. What do you mean we don't stand a chance? I'm waiting for the Trunders. Sure, there's a couple of them. You know, it's a pretty good, uh, impressive key, this. Look how many sets these guys have. Brutal key. You know, if this clan comes up and starts pumping damage, fair enough. But they've got three ineligible people. These guys, you know, they might pump some damage, but they're at similar keys to us. You're fighting different suns. Yeah, there's lots of suns of science. No brainer. That makes more sense. I was, I, I swear when you were telling me, I was like, you're going to lose. I'm like, mm, I, think we're, I think we're okay this week. Like, we've got quite a head start. We've got quite a lead on them. Um, you know, <laughs> that's why I was a bit surprised. You were telling me, don't, why am I bothering? Like, uh, we're, we're fine. Um, so. Yeah, you know. This is the craziness. Like, shoot, this team's a nuts. Look how strong this team is. He's got such a strong team. 849 million with, with Harima Tirvald there. Arch is in his hard team. His brutal team now with right with Razzlevarg. So my nightmare team three two three seven, about half of his. Um, 
you know, I, I could have gone a bit further on Nightmare. I could have started again, but I'm confident we're going to win. And I've got one more key to use tomorrow, so I could probably get 100 million on, on Brutal pretty comfortably. So this will be my highest damage probably in a while. I don't know if I'll beat uh, Shooter, though. Shooter might be uh, good because that Nightmare key didn't go as deep as I thought it would. It'd be very different, will it? Okay, log in. Oops, doesn't really matter. What have we got in the Mystic Market? Oh, five star Rathalo soul. Oof. Oof, that is so tempting. But at the same time, I'm like, I can't, I shouldn't. But at the same time, I'm like, yes, I want to. But at the same time, I'm like, no. But at the same time, I'm like, yes. What would he give me? I mean, it's not really that much of a big deal. It's like 0.5% on 7 buffs. So it's like a... 3.5% damage buff. It's not that crazy good. I don't I don't need that one. That I'd love the 6 star, but I don't really need the 5 star. So we save. I'm just like... You just get so little essence. I feel like spending any essence, unless you know you're going to get like a really good like 6 star... It just feels off. It feels wrong, you know? I, so I just, I can't bring myself to spend the, the stuff. Um, I, ha I do need to awaken our mans. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, so missions are going to get pushed tomorrow. We've got a big day tomorrow of missions. We've got to uh, get the fire night done. I, I, I paused for the fire night. And then we've got to basically try and get a mythical boot. I'll let you know in Discord how much energy it costs me to get this goddamn boot. Because it's going to be a lot. You pulled a Garol six-star soul. Nice. Oh, yes, I was. Sorry. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, the Rathalos build. So he is currently in six-piece Merciless for the Ignore Defense. And one turn Stone Skin. Now, you might be wondering why have I got R Rathalos in Merciless because... In six-piece Merciless because, you know, hey, this ignores 100% defense. Well, it's because I use his A3 as well as his A1 for damage. So I I've got, like, two of the three abilities doing damage. But I am curious as to whether or not it's better to just run a four-piece Merciless, four-piece Reflex damage option and try to just use this only. I'm curious about that. My gut tells me this is the better build. But I am curious about the the other build to see if it's good. He's currently like in a counterattack mastery. Um, he's in War Master because obviously he ignores mostly ignores defense. So I could go Helm Smasher. Potentially might be better. In terms of stats for what we just had in Hydra, he is at 7.1k attack, 323% crit damage, 262 speed, and he's got 14% ignore defense in that Merciless guild uh, gear. So he's got... He's holding most of my good Merciless gear right now. You know, he's holding, like, the chest piece with double crit rate, the crit damage gloves. But you can see, like, I've, I've still got 20% crit damage. Really, I should be doing, like, this and going, hey, can you give me crit damage? Crit damage! Ooh! <laughs> Oh, that's a dopamine rush. Oh, that feels good. Do you know, that's like the most craziest. Oh, that feels good. Oh. 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 So we can get like 20% more crit damage now onto the build. That's great. That'll take us up to... Uh, 45% crit damage when we ascend all that. We'll send the rest tomorrow. Someone check his PC. But I still need to do the top row. Like, all of this is wrong. Like, it needs to be attack and attack. But he's holding some of my best merciless gear. Uh, we've got like a triple attack banner there. We've also got like a triple attack ring. That'll be maxed out tomorrow. So by the time I finish, he'll be pretty good. You know, he's getting up there. So. Uh, the Alatrian was is kind of in like a damage guardian build just to help absorb the damage for the team. 291 speed. 
uh, in Hydra. He's at like two nine three or one speed, two thirty percent crit damage, low defense, uh, low HP. Base HP is not so good, but he's like I've put him in like a, a kind of like a defensive, slightly damagey build, just to supplement the damage output. Uh, we've got. Uh, Nurgagante Archer. Now, I've not got my Nurgagante Archer or anything like Reflex. Because she is my Mischief tank, I can't have her outrunning the buffs of everyone else. So she doesn't get any extra turns in this build. Uh, she's fully booked, but she's just in broken sets in really good stats. So in Hydra, she has got 450 resistance, 250% crit damage. I built her for damage. Now, you might be wondering why is the Axie so low? Well, by the time you get 212 Axie plus Mikage's Aura here for 80 plus her A1, which gives her increased accuracy, which she gets the moment I do um, an ally attack. She basically doesn't require anything more than 212 accuracy on here um, whatsoever. That's all she needs. Uh, masteries wise, she's just in counter attack masteries with uh, Stoke to Fury in case it's a bit more damage. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what I've got her in. And again, it's just broken sets. Good pieces, good rolls on these gear. You know, it's like double, you know, it's a 23 speed shield. 22 speed there. It's more of my resist speed gear than my axi speed gear. But again, like, awakening wise, I need to extend that out to get crit damage. I need to switch that to crit damage. I need to switch that. That axi is fine there, to be honest. That needs to be switched out. So we've got a lot of dusting to do on that one. Uh, Michinaki is somewhat built. You might be wondering why is it a five star? This chest happens to be the best one that I've got. It's pretty rubbish, but it, it is what it is. It's just defense, defense, defense. The top row ascension is actually really good. This ideally is defense as well. HP, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but ideally, you know, these gloves are okay. He's got a lot of room for growth. Right now, he's currently running at around about 208 speed, 242% crit damage, and... 5.5k defense probably he's my weakest build here and i could improve him a lot um i could probably improve him a lot uh lydia is actually full damage hex believe it or not lydia's full damage hex she is 256 speed 196 percent crit damage 3.7k attack 376 actually because it's what we need we've got that actually aura 14 percent ignore defense i've kind of positioned her as much as like damage as i can in hex because like i said even though I've got Michinaki as Hex, you do need a second Hex in case you have a problem with um, the Mischief Head consuming your Hex champion. I always feel like two Hexes are better than one. And the, the more consistent you can have Hex out, the more damage you'll do. Um, just straight up. And then Mikage is actually, I've got her in Relentless full damage as well. These boots are the bane of my existence. They will not roll speed. At all. They're the bane of my existence, but they are so good, those boots. Um, defense percentage here is not great. Crit rate, you know, it should technically be crit damage, but I've left it as it is. She's currently running at 285 speed, 5k attack, 310 crit damage. Um, again, her using an aura for Axie Aura kind of covers everything we need. Uh, we've got crit rate there. We've got, you know, pretty decent, decent build. Her accessories are quite good. Triple roll attack with accuracy. Pretty good. Triple attack refresh. Actually better even though it's defense ring. Um, it's just really solid. So that's the Mikage. I've gone full damage. So I I always try to get 250 for damage. Uh, 250 is the nightmare key. But yeah, Mikage. Uh, Michinaki is my weaker build here. He needs a lot of work. Um, I'm pretty sure I must have stolen something from him. Because this piece isn't leveled up and a bunch of different things. So I don't use Mikage in Live Arena, no. Mikage is used in Hydra mostly and um, lots of Cintranos areas. So. Still better than Hyomin Chinaki. Yeah, for my level of account, it's not big enough, you know, so. Yeah, I had to take her out of Relentless because if she's in Relentless, she outruns her buffs and then she's no longer the Mischief Tank. Because I have, like, you got to remember, I've got Michinaki, uh, Mikage basically extend all of my allies buffs. I've got Alatrian randomly extending ally buffs. So the buffs aren't falling off unless I get consumed. So she takes too many extra turns. She runs out of buffs and then essentially is no longer the mischief tank. 
So she had to come out of Relentless to basically run as she does. But she doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's a three turn cooldown. She places Provoke for two turns. I outlap the boss, which is all I need to do at these speeds. So she's absolutely fine to run in the way she does because of the way that it's balanced. So it's not really a problem. It's it's absolutely fine um, for that. So, so yeah, that's why I don't really want to, I don't really want to change my nightmare team because it works it's it's a pretty solid nightmare team is it the best nightmare team in the world no but then i don't actually have the best hydro champions in the world right i don't have harimas i don't have things like um Grizors. i don't have an acrisia i don't have supreme garlic i don't have taras so you've got to work with what you've got you know i don't have two hanarak that can bunch up a team supreme garlic is an incredibly strong hydro champion very very good so I do have some good ones. I'm not saying my team's my, my, my account's trash for it, but like, you know, I've got I got Michinaki, it's very good, but you've got to work with what you've got. And I don't necessarily have like the big power picks that people have in terms of like solving problems. So that's why I quite like my nightmare team, because it's one of those teams that just feels really stable and solid, it all works nicely together, and I just don't have to stress about it. Whereas you'll see in the brutal team, I'm like, oh, I don't really know what to build here or what to build this or what to build that. Um yeah, exactly. That's the nice thing with Alatrian. And the nice thing with Alatrian is his buffs are all protected. So even if you do get a bit of a bad situation where you 3% or something, he's not, they're only really stealing things like increased crit damage or um, like increased attack for a little bit, right? That's probably the worst one. But his block debuffs, his increased defense and his, um, his shield and all that, it's all protected. So they can't steal it, which is good. Would I probably get more damage if I run him as lead? I don't know. Some big hitters in this clan now. Well, he's got a defense aura. I mean, it's only 30% defense. Uh, it's basic. His base defense is really poor. So you're basically saying he gets 400 defense. He gets about a ring. It's not as crazy. Uh, would you ever consider Crindon? Yes, I would. The The thing is, she's just in the Fragment Portal, and I've not found a window to summon her. Because I've done all the Doom Tower champions, it's more risky for me to summon champions out of this portal unless I really want to or I need it for content. So I just haven't summoned her yet. But yeah, she would be, um, she'll be someone I would consider using. Absolutely. Uh, Michin actually can't play some weak hits, no. Yeah, I didn't really feel the need to build him with resistance because I only really use him against bosses and bosses can't steal his gear, so. I didn't see the need for resistance. What are they going to do? Steal a bit of turn meter? It's not really a problem. Um, you know, these things are protected. So, I also. The thing is, we've also got the aura here. So, this aura is more valuable in my opinion, for like flat stat accuracy. This is going to be 15% more of that 80 accuracy aura. Whereas 15% more of defense 30 would be like, it's like what? It's uh, 439 times 0 0.15. It's going to be like 65 defense. So the, one aura is giving me 65 defense or I can get 12 more accuracy. 12 more accuracy is a bit more valuable than 65 defense. It's an extra roll. Uh, when will the fragment summon from the recent fusion be available for Maud? Uh, probably in the next patch. She outruns the buffs. Yeah, that's it. Because she takes so many turns. Um, she's got the, um, she's got the, uh, she's got the martial ed problem. Martial ed is exactly the same problem where he just, like, because he extra turns so much, he, he never can keep increased attack on him. At least with Gwendolyn she keeps her own buffs right she she self buffs i'm pretty sure she puts increased attack on herself maybe she doesn't no she doesn't so she has the same problem you know she's the same problem but this is a crazy passive so imagine when when we get carnage this is what carnage does but he does it every three points does it so much more efficiently No, 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 no. 
I didn't say Taras couldn't out damage Rathalos. I said Taras can't deal more than a single hit than Rathalos does. I was saying that Rathalos is 3.9 million I did was like, I don't think Taras can hit that in one hit. That's what I was saying. Taras can match Rathalos if he's well built. I'm not saying he can't. Absolutely not. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to make that statement. When am I planning to get Carnage? I don't know. We'll see. I might try to push to complete this rotation. You know, I'm halfway there. I think it's like nine months if you if you take it casually, and we're coming up to month five. So I'm about halfway there. It's not really a problem. So. Yeah, booster damage, exactly. Um, yeah, I'll get it this year, for sure. I'll have it this year, for sure. Absolutely. Carnage is insane. Carnage will break the game. Carnage hits harder than Siegfried because of this passive. He basically gets 100% crit damage if he has 300 accuracy. Now, keep it in mind, a 6-star for Mythical is basically 300 accuracy. He gets from a 6-star Ascension, which you can get from Cintranos, um, 300, was it 100? Was it 70, he gets like 100, I think it's 90 accuracy. So he gets 30% crit damage on top of 45% crit damage. So a 6-star Soul for Carnage is 75% crit damage. Not to mention... You put this in Hydra, it's going to do bonkers damage. Because he will ignore 10% of the target's defense for each debuff they're under. You can put 5 debuffs up into Hydra, right? When you attack with any of these abilities then, if you attack with his A1, he will have a 50% chance to counterattack whenever an enemy hits a champion with debuffs. If they have 10 debuffs, or even 5 debuffs, he always counterattacks. And when you put, like, um, a lethal set on him and you get enough debuffs up on them, you'll just do tr true damage. Every one of these abilities will do true damage. Every single one of them. Perma true damage. Not to mention, he's got a base attack. Not to mention, he's got a base attack of 1,960. You can probably get Carnage's attack in a good build up to about 12,000. Probably he will have around... you probably build a little bit of accuracy in there. Get your area bonuses up, right? But if you think about it, 80, 80 accuracy in Hydra, to him, 80 accuracy is worth, like, what is it? 80 divided by 3, 26% crit damage. Okay? So 26% crit damage. On top of the 30% he's already getting. So area bonuses for him is 56% crit damage. And, as someone is just pointing out, his multipliers are attack and accuracy. So he adds his accuracy into the attack multiplier. So if you have 350 accuracy, the damage goes with an extra 350 on that attack multiplier. So it's almost like having an attack. And then, of course, if you have increased accuracy, 350 multiplied by 1.5 is... Of course, 525, 525 divided by 3, 175% crit damage he's going to gain from his accuracy stat. 175% crit damage. That's not from anywhere of other sources. So he'll still have 300% flat from things like area bonuses, crit damage gloves, crit damage ascension, uh, amulet, amulet ascension, um... Things like increased crit damage buff. You could probably get a Carnage to hit for 550 to 600 percent crit damage, 11 to 12k attack, doing true damage. True damage. True damage. Like it's going to be insane. It's going to be absolutely insane. And if you're using him in arena. He's got Block Revive. He attacks all enemies two times. This is a 2.5 times attack AoE. Or 2.5 times attack plus accuracy AoE. So it's a 5 times attack AoE with AoE Block Revive if they're under 3 or more debuffs. And he ignores shields. And he ignores ally protection. 
and he ignores unkillable, and he counterattacks all the time, and he heals. I've been sitting here for ages going, don't worry about Tar Taras and Marichka. Their days are coming because the moment someone gets this champion, they're going to go, holy crap. It's like taking Siegfried, make it AoE, but double the damage. Now, the only downside is you can't do true damage as much because you can't debuff as much in Arena. That's the only downside. But outside of Arena, he's just going to... Pfft, it's just going to be ridiculous. He's going to blow the game apart. Um, on the on his base form, he's actually pretty good for PvE as well. Like, block passive skills. Like, So here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. You know, um, Rotus, everyone keeps telling me how good Rotus is. Well, this guy will attack one enemy three times. Good luck, Rota. Uh, sorry, R Ronda, not Rota. So I should say Ronda. The first hit places block passive skills. You can't remove it. The second hit places block active skills. The third hit, 100% turn me to steel. So if you're not dead, I've stolen everything from you. Then he goes, okay, tell you what, I've taken a bit of damage. It's a bit of a problem. I know, I'll just swap HP with you. And I'll steal all your buffs at the same time. And I'll transfer all the debuffs for me. And I will put seal on you. Seal is this new little pointless thing that, you know, we don't really care about seal. seal seal's the trash one. Master seal's what we want. Uh, I don't really see the point of seal. All seal does is it ruins your chance. Like, people are not going to be... It's going to create a lot of support tickers. Because people will be like, why doesn't this work? Why isn't that working? Seal will stop all of the gear sets and masteries from working. So, Helm Smasher doesn't work. Merciless sets don't work. Relentless doesn't work. Um, things like uh, what are the things we have like guardian sets won't work reflex sets won't work uh, stone skin won't work anymore protection sets won't work anymore when it's master seal it blocks the blessing as well but we don't know what's going to happen with that so he places this and those debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked if the target has 50% less HP you know, it's uh, he he's a bit of a sheep magnet on his A1. Don't get me wrong, he's a bit of a sheep magnet on his way it is on his A1, it's pretty bad. Um You can, by the looks of it, by the way, place the seal, then buff spread it. Because whenever you kill an enemy, he has a hundred percent chance of applying a debuff spread, taking all the debuffs, all the debuffs from the target and placing them on all the enemies. Not just two, all of them. So you basically put Master Seal out on someone, kill it with the A3, and then he puts it out on everyone. Then he becomes a sheep. But hey, you know. <laughs> this dude is going to break the game. I said it the moment I saw it. I said it the moment I did the math. This dude is going to break the game. I actually think I need to check his multipliers on the website. Because we've got the, the damage ratings now. I need to check his multipliers. I don't know if it's actually... Oh, wait. That's his alternate form. Uh, alternate form. Yeah, there we go. Uh, he's number 20 in the arena right now. Uh, I need to check why it's not higher. Um, there's also no multiplier for his, his singularity of pain. So I would imagine it's because I'm not applying the number no, enough debuffs. Because in arena, I don't consider debuffs. But in in clan boss, his, his, um, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his A3 is basically... Number seven. It's pretty godlike across the board. What about Hydra? Hydra, because his, his, um, his A3 has penalties, uh, it becomes a bit weaker. It's still, But it's still number 21, apparently. I really need to finish the tier list for the damage ratings. I will do that eventually. But uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Anyway, guys, um, on that note, who's number one? Jintoro. Nobody can compete with Jintoro. This ability uh, here, when this five hits, nothing can compete with it. It's the strongest ability in the game. Single target hit. So, uh, Jintor is the best. Uh, anyway, guys. Thanks for hanging out, as always. Um, CVC tomorrow. Good luck if you're chasing. I will be pushing missions more than anything tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what, what the week awaits us. Deck of Fates is at the end. I think Thursday or Friday we'll have the free regain event. So, you know, if I get... I'll make plans around it. We'll see what happens. And yeah. Have a good evening, everyone.